agenda review. Actually, first, we probably should introduce, uh, we have a couple new board members after our elections. Uh, to my left is Jen Chevalier, who is representing Peggy. To my right is Terry O'Shea, who's coming back for another round. <laughs> and uh, Pete Magnet is <clears throat> on, on vacation. So. He's on his way to Hawaii. Yeah, so we won't say bad things about him. <laughs> So, for Jen, do you want us to go around and introduce ourselves? Please. I think that would be helpful. Sure. Uh, I'm Chris Shepard. I also represent Highgate, and I'm the chair of this board. Terry. Robert Jarvis, I'm the director of technology. Julie Regimal, superintendent. Megan Conley represents Swanton. Kosha Patel, director of curriculum. Laura McAllister, business manager. I'm here at Bouchard, school board secretary. Steve Scott, Highgate Elementary. <laughs> Devin Batchelder, Franklin. Here at Beauregard. Don Collins Swanton, Vice Chair of the Board. Behind us, we have some administrators. Hi, I'm Joyce Hake, I'm the principal at Franklin. Dean is saying tomorrow, principal at Swanton. Uh, Justina Jeanette, assistant principal at Swanton. Very good. Uh, I have agenda amendments. You said you had a couple? Really, just the fact that we don't need to do my superintendent's report because we have 27 policies. And um, the lease discussion, it would be more of a discussion. I don't have one for uh, action tonight. Uh, on to correspondence, visitors, and public comments. That was easy. <laughs> Uh, consent agenda approval of the minutes from the April 30th meeting. I'll accept the motion. Is it April 30th or May 6th? Uh, well, that was from the election. Oh, we didn't have that one too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry. And May 6th, I believe, was approved at the last meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'll just keep that up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make the motion. Thank you. <laughs> I'll second that. Discussion? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor of approving the April 30th meeting, uh, April 30th meeting minutes, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> motion carries 8-0. Uh, also entertain a motion to approve the June 4th uh, meeting minutes. I'll second again. Any discussion? I wasn't part of the board then, so my vote wouldn't count, right? So does that mean? You, you can abstain. abstain. You can abstain. Yeah. So mention that. So you're abstaining on the last one too? Okay, mm -hmm. so it'll be okay. seven zero one on the last one. And then on this one, all those in favor of approving the June fourth minutes, anybody saying aye? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Mm -hmm. One. Seven, uh, two. two. So six zero two on that one. Uh, new business, integrated field review. Well, this is Kosha. I'm going to pull up her presentation. So I'm going to give you a brief version of the integrated field review results. Um, you can go to the next slide. So here in Vermont, the Agency of Education evaluates how each school district, uh, uh, how they implement the educational quality standards. Um, so there is a group of uh, peers from different schools as well as members of the Agency of Education who come and visit our schools and they interview different stakeholder groups and give us a report on how we are doing in terms of implementing these standards. So here you can see the educational quality review. The purpose of it is really to identify what are some of the um, things we are doing that um, need commendations that we're doing well and then they give us some recommendations so for each of the educational quality standards they give us two commendations and two recommendations and as you can see on that um, you know diagram up there 
Um, they also provide what's called the annual snapshot, and that is just being released on the 20th, which is in a couple of days. So I will be able to report to the board on uh, that in um, one of the July meetings. But for now, this is the integrated field re review report that uh, the review actually happened on March 14th, and um, <clears throat> these are some of the results. So here you can see some pictures from what actually happened. We met here in the um, MVU library, and there were uh, members from uh, three different districts. There were members from uh, Milton, Maple Run, Franklin Northeast, and then us. And there were several members from the Agency of Education. They visited all the schools. They interviewed parents, students, teachers, and administrators, and the central office team. Um, Josh Soulier was um, the person in charge of the integrated field review. He is the assistant director of the Educational Quality Review Team, and he came and presented the results to our administrators on May 9th. So the first uh, educational quality standard is academic proficiency. In this, uh, the agency really wants to see whether we have a clearly articulated curriculum and whether it's being implemented in our whole system? Is there a local assessment plan? How are we monitoring instructional practices and proficiency-based learning? So the two pictures you see is our math leaders and down there are literacy leaders who play a very critical role in um, making sure that our curriculum is being implemented. So the commentations that we received were that we do have a clearly articulated district-wide curriculum, which has been developed in a collaborative way. We have a clear uh, scope and sequence for math and English language arts that's built on common language that all our teachers really understand. Um, the second commendation was that we collaboratively keep building on those practices, and every month there are monthly meetings that are usually with me and different curriculum teams in our efforts to continue refining the curriculum and making sure that it's being implemented. A couple of recommendations were to strengthen our proficiency-based learning practices and to make sure that it's consistent. In case six, it's pre pretty consistent, but we are still evolving the seven through 12. So we still have to really strengthen that. And um, the other thing they said is that when they interviewed students, some of the students were asking for more data to inform their learning. So they want to know the results uh, of their learning. They want more feedback. So that was interesting to hear that mm -hmm. that's what uh, students were looking for. The next educational quality standard is personalization. And in that, they want to see whether we are providing personalized learning to students. Are there flexible pathways towards graduation? Are we offering a full range of courses? And then are we taking into account student voice and choice? So the commendations were that we do offer many opportunities for flexible pathways in our supervisory union and that we have invested in positions to support students in this process and that students did feel that they had opportunities to share their voice and they had a lot of choice in their learning. Recommendations were that we need to really streamline the personalized learning plan process, make it a little more efficient, and then be able to communicate that information uh, more effectively. So that was some feedback that came from parent groups and from student groups that they wanted some more communication regarding those uh, flexible pathways. Question, if you go back one, on the student voice, did they indicate at what grade levels? Were these mainly high school students? Because I know at MVU we do have, we have had students come in and talk about a couple of the programs, uh, science being one, agriculture being one, I think math. So I'd be curious to know if, if the student voice was primarily high school or if it was K-12. 
They don't break it down for us. They give us what they saw as a whole SU. So they did <coughs> interview elementary <coughs> students as well as high school students. So at this point, we can't really say which group they based it on, but they said that they took evidence from the entire supervisory union, and that's what they noticed. And it wouldn't come to the level of common, as someone who went through this process, writing a report, it wouldn't come to a commendation unless more than one student mm -hmm. yeah. or individual uh, made that same comment. So it could well have been in a couple of settings. Yeah. I guess, and I don't know what the next step in this process is. Will they be back, or is they send the report and it ends there? We have the report, the full report, and this um, integrated field review takes place every three years. So, I, I would be interested in knowing more about the student voice if there's a way we can find out. Yeah. I don't, sure. I don't want it by student, but I just, I, I'm just curious. I think it's very, student voice is a very powerful thing. Mm -hmm. And I think it's overlooked by many school districts. So I was pleased to see it being there, but we'll leave it alone tonight, but I'll probably ask in the future. Sure. Um, the next educational quality standard was safe and healthy schools where they really look at the social and the physical health of students and they look at the physical environment, are students uh, you know, uh, taken care of, the social emotional health, and then multi-tiered systems of support. So when students do have issues socially, emotionally, or physically, are we able to provide different levels of support to them? Uh, the commendations were that they saw throughout all our buildings that there was a lot of attention being paid to student appreciation and working towards goals as a school community and they gave some examples. They saw a lot of display of student work in all our buildings, positive messages, uh, positive behavior intervention, support system charts, expectations, a lot of student recognition for what they've been doing well, and then um, creating visual reminders of school cultural expectations. So that was uh, the first commendation. The second one was they saw a very strong commitment to social, emotional, and <clears throat> physical well-being throughout our supervisory union. They mentioned that multiple times, yeah. actually, in the report out, that it was commented upon as being a, a remarkable strength of our schools. So I thought it was worth <laughs> And then they had one recommendation that we should continue looking at our social emotional learning practices and really bring more consistency to supports across schools. So one of the things we have uh, put in our continuous improvement plan, which I shared with you at the last meeting, was to really develop a clearly articulated social emotional curriculum for kindergarten through grade 12. So, it's being practiced in all the buildings, but to bring it more to a consistent level. Um, the fourth standard is high quality staffing, where they really want to see uh, what is the role that administrators play in terms of supervision and evaluation of staff, professional development opportunities, and then what are we doing to really maintain the quality uh, of teaching by the continuous improvement process. Commendations were we do have a strong alignment and cohesiveness in professional development offerings. Uh, and there are many, many opportunities for staff members to continue building their expertise. Um, and parents, teachers, and other stakeholders reported overall satisfaction with the hard work and approach of administrators teachers and central office staff. And as Julie mentioned, that they usually uh, give you this commendation after several people on the team have noticed the same thing, and they've written it down as an evidence. So that was good to get that commendation. A recommendation, again, was to continue providing professional development, especially in the new teacher evaluation model that we adopted this year. And so there is a plan in place to continue providing that support, uh, not just to teachers in terms of understanding what that evaluation system is, but also administrators are going to be getting 
for the um, professional learning on um, really digging deeper into that model and using it. Uh, the last one is the investment priorities. And this standard really applies to how are we using the funding in our district? How are we allocating funds in a way that uh, promotes equity and uh, is, is really providing us all the things we need to run our schools in an uh, efficient manner? And they look at, you know, are we continuously improving? Uh, do we have a student data system? Is there financial alignment between the schools and communication? The commendations, again, were that there was a high level of commitment to improving social and emotional learning and behavior supports. We have had several uh, professional development trainings for our staff members uh, connected to social emotional learning throughout the year, as well as right now this week as we have um, in-service going on. Um, and also the administration has prioritized the creation of positions to support uh, behavior as well as social emotional learning in our schools. Um, they also com commended us on the use of data for improving teaching and learning in our schools. Um, they noticed that there were regularly built-in times, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, where Teachers are meeting in professional learning communities. We have three half data days during the year where uh, teachers are given time to look at their data, really identify strengths and needs, and then to make um, plans based on that. A recommend. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. A recommendation was uh, that there was strong communication between home and school. In some schools, whereas in some schools there was not that regular communication about student progress and discipline, and so they recommend that we really uh, look at what would be the best way to improve homeschool communication and maybe like conduct some surveys with parents or find uh, what parents would really uh, want in terms of communication. So that was a recommendation to improve that. Did they give you any indication privately as to which schools might be in greater need? No, they don't give you individual school reports. They give you just as a supervisory union. It was interesting because we actually, the admin team actually asked about that because it's something they all wanted that feedback on. And originally, the whole process was designed so that it would not be identifiable from school to school. And because people were fearful of that, but then in the end it turns around that the information is so good, people are wanting to know, well, was that my school? But it, the way it's structured, there's no way of telling. But the admin team all saw that recommendation and, and were <coughs> all looking at it good. to find out my from guess parents. would be, it's only a guess, that in the elementary schools there's quite strong communications. And as we get farther up the line, no fault of administration or teachers, uh, but I don't think this, the communications is there at, in any school district uh, that you would have in the elementary schools. I would generally agree with that. So. Mm -hmm. And so, um, would, sorry, just curious what he said. No, I said probably, yeah, oh. I, I agree with him. <coughs> I think that the smaller schools, are, there's probably more communication and the bigger you get, the, the more you lose, I guess. Although not in the fine Swanton school. <coughs> no, I'm not saying that at all. Of course As not. As kids get older, I think it gets a little more difficult. Um, yeah. you, you're outside of a classroom teacher model or a team model. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So that's something we're going to be working on as an admin team. And so basically the integrated field review is really designed to help the community mm -hmm. see how well we are doing in terms of implementing the educational quality standards to see which ones have been met, what might be some next steps for us to improve. So um, the commendations really help us to kind of validate the work that we've been doing over the past few years, and then the recommendations give us some ideas of things that we can improve on. I, I think it was really nice too that um, 
the administrative team really felt that all of the recommend there were no surprises. So the areas where we know we need to continue to work, that was what was found. So that actually was very validating, I think, for the administrative team. Yeah. How does this compare to last year's, or not last year's, but the previous review? This was the first one. The first, okay. Yeah. Um, this new. is something new that they've started, and here in Vermont, what they want to do is they don't want people to really look at their schools just from the data point of view. So they want to give you SBAC in terms of quantitative data, but they also want to give you some qualitative data so that you can make a more uh, rounded out you know, understanding of what's going on in your schools. So that's why they did started doing the integrated field reviews this year. And then, like I said, they um, are going to be releasing this annual snapshot, which is, again, um, giving you an idea of how you're doing in terms of not just content, but also in terms of equity and other aspects of school. So, And that's what comes out on the 20th? Yes. So I'll be able to report to you on that in July. Question, may I ask a question? So what is the plan to go from here? I mean, it's a nice report. I personally am a little disappointed not in the results, but I've been familiar with two other processes we've had before this in the last 25 years. I think we're a little more specific, but anyway, it's helpful. What is, what is our plan? What is your plan from here? And when will we hear next about where you're, where? We, and they'll say you, but where we are focusing our, our time. Because you can't do all, you can't make them all top priority. Right they all have to be addressed. Absolutely. So uh, with the annual snapshot data, uh, our SPAC data should be released soon, as well as this. Uh, the admin team is going to meet on August 12th and 13th. We are having an admin retreat. And at that time, our goal is really to start making a clear vision and then creating like uh, an action plan for what we need to be working on. So we should be able to report back to you in terms of next steps. So as we build agendas, I guess I would say maybe September or October, it'd be nice to have you back to let us know what we're doing. Yes, absolutely. And like I said, as soon as SPAC data is released, as well as this annual snapshot, I should be able to give you that uh, in July. There was one last slide. I wanted to make sure I thanked everybody, especially our administrators, staff, as well as the board for always supporting the work that we are doing in our school and in our district. So we have a question too. Sure. Uh, just one quick question. Uh, how do your school improvement plans, their their Title One school, uh, school improvement plans, and the grant that was received at Mrs. Boy fit into your plans to improve schools? So last time I was here, I gave copies of the continuous improvement plans to all the board members, um, and those were approved by the board. They've also been approved by the Agency of Education. So we have to write a continuous improvement plan for the district, and then each school also writes a uh, I plan. I understand how that works, but you're talking about next steps. So you're dovetailing the school improvement plans into your next steps? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. That is actually our guide. We use those continuous improvement plans to plan professional development and to plan how we are going to use our professional development days during the year. Um, based on all the um, information we are receiving from all these qualitative and quantitative measures. Thank all right. You. Thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's great. Thank you very much. That's great. So on to, or is there any more questions for this? Okay, hearing none, uh, we'll move on to uh, MVSD logo, website, and board email. So Robert is going to talk to you a little bit about what he's been doing around the transition. <clears throat> sure, if you want to start, uh, I guess we can start with the logo since we got it up. It's up there. All right. Um, so what you see is uh, is the work of um, 
uh, Franklin resident and MVU grad, Franklin MVU grad, uh, David uh, Rush. He's been working on design and getting feedback from our web designers, uh, our teachers, and technology folks, as well as the administrative team. Um, and he's kind of he's narrowed down to this one, and he's got a couple of versions of this, a similar um, logo. That one doesn't project yes. very well. Yeah. And he just did that so that you can see what it would look like. You, you, you put it on dark clothing versus maybe white and letterhead. And uh, this is just a letterhead uh, mock up. Um, just to give you an idea of the logo that, that we've got planned and we're hoping to approve tonight or to gather feedback, I guess. What we wanted to have is something that was simple, but something that was not too. I don't know, you know, with pictures of mountains and, you know, and things like that, but something that was representing the Siskoi Valley School District in a simple way. The river is there to make it, um, without the river, it just looks like letters. Um, but it is, and, and we sort of, the feedback that we received is it's nice to have the simple M with the V as well, because if you can imagine t-shirts or like the letterhead, having it in the corner um, where on the website you might have the full Mississippi Valley School District lettering. Yeah. And it's crisp and the colors are all shades of blue uh, with the white and we felt that the blue and white was important to have. Yeah. And we'll be able to work with like the font and the color a little bit but you know staying within that, that palette but also keeping it as simple as possible. When you do logos you want to keep them as simple as possible. Um, but I thought he did a good job, and, and I thought we had a pretty good feedback on it. Um, if you want to switch to the website. So we've started to design the new, uh, it says MVSD schools will be our new domain. So switching from fnwsu.org to mvsdschools.org. Uh, that'll happen July 8th officially. Um, and tonight I'll actually give you your email so you can start using and that'll be a seamless transition for anybody with an FNW account will become an MVSD schools account without changing passwords or, or names or anything to, the, to that effect. Um, so this is just a simplified um, beginning to the website and I think specifically I wanted to point out if you go back up to the top menu uh, for most people in here the purposes of getting to the school board tab um, clicking right on there We'll give you your board minutes, board member names, and uh, agendas will be here as well, so you can see those, those listed, uh, as well as the calendar on the right. Um, so if anybody didn't want their phone number publicized, you better let me know right away. Uh, that's on there, as well as your email links. And those are, speaking of email, mm -hmm. those will be uh, Missiscoy Valley School District domain. Yeah. So Can right, so yeah, so right now, e emails are still at fnwsu.org. On July 8th, those will become at mvsdschools.org. Uh, the rest of it will stay the same. So how you see it, like devin.batchelder, that's the beginning of your email. And the rest of it would be at fnw, and then eventually at mvsd.org. Julian, I got a question. Um, how will the public know of this switch if they need to get hold of kids, teachers, or... Well, the really nice thing is that FNWSU is not going away. So any email sent to that or any click on a link to FNW is still going to um, forward you essentially to... It's the same email. Okay. So it's not really forwarding, but it's the same account. So I'm keeping that domain in place at least for a year, and the, probably another three or three to six months after. And the schools will still have their own websites. Yes, yeah, the school sites will still be. For school teachers contact things like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not, not to sound too nostalgic here, but has anybody considered putting uh, Thunderbird somewhere along next to that logo? We, we played around, and because each school in each town had a slightly different uh, mascot, mm -hmm. we couldn't find something unified. <laughs> oh, there was a... There's a unifying bird theme going on here in Franklin Northwest. But. <laughs> I was just taking it from a historical point of view. Well, the schools will still all have their mascots, and there, there will no, be no shortage of Thunderbirds anywhere. I mean, that's, that's for sure. Um, and I think that's also part of why we didn't want a mascot or a logo or anything outside of, of the letters, really, um, because that does, that identifies 
that identity gets very tight. <clears throat> It's kind of funny you ask because um, Swanton has a nice um, logo that incorporates the wings of a bird. It's hard to tell that it's a swan, but it's definitely the wings of a bird. And we we're kind of thinking along those the that theme, and you know, well, not every school has that. And, you know, Thunderbird is very different than a swan, and so well, they, they had that discussion. Just, just that for oh. 50, 60 years that people have identified with the Thunderbird logo. Yeah, and I think it's important that the schools you know keep that keep their own identity with the logos and. Mascots too, um, but it was nice that the colors. Uh, every school's color incorporates some shade of blue and, and white, so you know we're, we're able to keep the colors without throwing some orange, gaudy orange in there or anything. So that was nice. Um, I have a question about the emails. Uh, yep. I currently don't have a SU email, so does that mean we're the ones that don't have them? We'll get on this new setup? Yep, I'll, get, I'll give you those right now if you want. I do want to point out that using your MVSD email will allow you to get to shared documents and files that Julie will, I don't know if we'll talk about tonight or you get a lot to do, but um, by logging into your email, you'll be able to get to those documents that other people can't get to. Yeah. Um, so she's got a folder there called MVSD board, and you all, when, when you log in, you'll see that. Your Google Drive will see the email to it as well. Um, so it's important that you use that email. Also, it's important to use that email for school sensitive data um, instead of uh, using personal emails. Also, it's, um, as a board member, it's important that you do board business on the board email because if you use your personal email, then if there was ever a request for records or a, a lawsuit or anything like that, your own personal email or work email could be subject to um, records request and subpoena. So by using the school district domain, first of all, everything we share within it privately is FERPA protected. So there's that piece um, that is helpful when you're in the domain, but also um, in, in the ability to collaborate more effectively um, and share documents. Uh, my intention is to have a folder for each board meeting and within it, any attachments will be in there uh, so that um, as they're ready, they get placed in that folder and you can go ahead and look at them and we don't have to be emailing links to everyone. They'll be just right there. <laughs> but it will be, it will be, um, E much more easily shared and, and secure um, and also um, it's just it's legally protects you uh, it, by using your school board email for school board business so what about our uh, like right now if we have a Swanton board or you know do we just get rid of that come July 1st or what do you recommend we do I recommend you forward those emails to your new email system because I'm sure people will still have you in their contacts so keep with the old while. email. Keep it for a while. Yeah. Uh, what I'm encouraging staff to do is add uh, to their uh, signature file a message saying July 8th our official email is first name dot last name at VSD schools. Oh, okay. Please update your contact list, that kind of thing. Um, and because it's not going away, there's no urgency, but the more people see that, they'll get used to it and over the course of a year. Right. You know, people will. But if you forward from your, your personal or your board emails currently to the new one, I think over time people will, you'll get, you, you won't lose email and over time people will recognize it. That's I know great. that that is how the changeover happened in my previous district and it actually was pretty seamless. And pretty soon people stopped emailing you at the old email address and started with the new, so. Um, but it does, it, does, it takes a little bit of time. I have a question about the logo. Absolutely, I knew you would. <laughs> <laughs> you can count on me. So, it seems super dark. Yeah. Well, it, also it's the projector. But go to the uh, go to the slideshow. I like the other one with the four letters. Now you're going to ask me to I find. Didn't, it. I did. I didn't until Julie said the M and the V were together. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't either. Yeah. The project. It's. It looks terrible it's on dark, the projector. Yeah. I, I have to. I have to say, if you look on my laptop, it's much brighter. But again, but if we're having these issues with just a pro with a projection yeah. of differentiating differentiating between these shades, mm -hmm. I'm thinking in print especially, and and as you mentioned, apparel and stuff are 
are, are the differences great enough well, in the shade? Well, I like that. Again, when we, yeah, we're so working with David when, he, when he's done, he's going to give us the files okay. so we can make adjustments. We have, so if, if, you know, a sports team says, well, we really want white instead of yeah, light blue light or something blue like that, or something. Right. they okay. have that, that's certainly available. On the website, we have a very dark background, so that yeah. kind of makes it even harder to pick out the differences yeah. in the color blue. Uh, but that blue, I'll tell them on the left, the M and V is actually a navy blue. It looks like black from here, so you know, it definitely it makes a difference what the background is. Yeah. yeah. A simple solution to that, though, is just put white line, outlining. Yep. Whenever it's on a dark background, you just say, oh, outline <coughs> all the letters. It makes them pop out. Yep. That's true. Is there any way possible to make that look a little more like a river? <laughs> We have played around with that river <laughs> slash tongue. Snake. 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 Yeah. Yep. I saw a tail. Um, Dragon we tried tail. It. People see a lot of it. We tried it without it completely, and it looks way too bland. Yeah. Oh, I think it's nice I to have like a river in there. I just wonder if there's any way to make it look we more put, like a river. Yeah, we put like some like texture waves in, and that didn't really waves. stick either. It reminds me of how to train your dragon kind of graphics and the tail. I mean, it's beautiful. I'm not... I just, I just wish the idea of that river could come across. So the Missisquoi River, I know it well because it's just about some property, starts up high. So yep. I was going to put a river in there. I started up high by the, on the elm and, and bring it down. That looks like you're trying to do a Nike swish and you missed it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but does, I, don't I don't know if people would even, like even then it would, I don't know yeah. if it's starting up, it's more of a waterfall. I don't know if people really yeah. understand can't the, see the topography yeah. enough to. Well, and this is also why we had a graphic designer involved. Yeah, good idea. They, they really help us job. with some of those. But there's nothing they can do to make it look more like a river. No, they did try. He's tried a few renditions. He had a he had one that had more of like a lakefront out in front too, and uh, it just didn't didn't, did, didn't blend. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Doesn't mean we can't revisit it at some point yeah. in the future, but we wanted something to start that sort of just represented. Yeah, just definitely wanted to get going with the website and get that in place for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, so regarding emails, uh, Terry was gracious yeah. enough to test it out without too many tears. She got into her email okay, so we're gonna say it worked, right? You Terry? made it very easy. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it worked easily with Rob beside you. You might want to do it tonight. And please feel free to contact me, but. Um, basically, your email is your first name dot last name at fnwsu.org. And then the password is all caps MVSD 2019 exclamation. Is this on your camera? Second day 2019. And go with an exclamation on it. We might have to change that password. I had to have a, yeah, you can change your password. I had to have a special get in. Okay. So we can all. I'm so MVSD all caps 2019 2019 with an exclamation on the end. And please make sure to change your password individually once you're locked in. Yeah. Sorry. I didn't, uh, I didn't force it, but yeah, I should have. Yeah, yeah, please do. Yeah. As you're so ours has a capital letter on the beginning of our first name and our last name. That doesn't make a difference. Make you a difference. can put it in or not. Yeah, it doesn't make a difference. The only place the capital makes a difference is in the password. So it needs to be capital M V S D 2019 exclamation. They just spell my name right. Yeah. All the letters and I have to ask her whatever she gave me. Is it Yes. That's Now staff will eventually switch over to first name dot last name at MVSD schools dot. You got it. So when a new board member comes on, we'll change it to 20, 2020. Can you that's that? just the password. The notes. Oh, that's a password. That's yeah. a password. We misunderstood. Yeah, that's Sorry. what I wondered. So, that wasn't the password. Okay. Once again, <laughs> your email is first name dot last name at, at mvsdschools dot org. That's what I thought it was. Okay. Sorry, yeah. I missed mis you. And, and the schools. password password is capital M V S D two zero one nine exclamation. Okay, I thought that was probably the password. Mm -hmm. Got it. All right. Schools.org. Schools. Schools.org, yeah. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. And certainly we'd be happy to come back and you know work with people or if you want to get in touch with me. And I, I definitely, I mean, I think it's great that you're working with a graphic designer and working on that logo. And, and I love the idea of a river. 
<laughs> See what we can do to make my it look more like a river. I'm just going to say, illuminate the river. There's no way you're going to make it work, but you like it. I, I like it if it looks more like a river. <laughs> I didn't know what it was when I first saw it. I didn't either. Yeah, we, no, no, no. Thought that it was a river. We can put some bull pelt and cows on the side. And <laughs> well, maybe current or something. Yeah, I don't know. There's got to be something. That might maybe we just leave it to I'll, I'll leave it to you guys. <laughs> I'll, I'll see how we go. I'm sure they know how to do it. I'll certainly make a suggestion to, to David. Trust me. Trust me. I'm at least qualified. At least I have no talent. We're now on June 15th. Oh, we're we're not on June 15th. Oh, we're moving forward. We're moving forward with it. And if it turns out to, it's not like a lifetime commitment. No, it's so, it's, if it, if it, Tends not to fly well, we can reel it back in. <laughs> David I didn't mean that. Yeah. 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 David's been thinking about making changes. So about, he's probably made 25 changes wow. already as we yeah. ask for little things. So wow. I just at some point want to say, okay, you've done a great job. We would like to pay you now for your time <laughs> yeah. and, and effort. But um, but he's so certainly going to see this on the agenda next month. I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out the process. Is it tonight? Do you need to know any suggestions we have tonight? Or, and so you can move forward and get the logos and do all of it? I think I'd like your your uh, approval to move forward with these as they are, and then we can always look at them again if uh, people are unhappy with it. Again, keeping in mind that he's going to give us free reign to make changes as we need to color changes, outline changes, those kinds of things. You know, I like the outline of the white around the blue, for instance. Um, pretty simple changes like that. So, so you're not waiting for a formal, a formal motion or anything? This is I don't more think we need informational logo. Approval, 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 right. consent. But being able to publicize it on the website, it'd be nice to have that. You know, well, that's what I, I was thinking. And, and I guess I don't come from a perspective that I want to do one now in six months I want to do another one and a year from now I want to do another one. I, I think people expect that whatever comes out is... We're going to stick with it for a while, but if there's, you know, mad panic about the river or some other aspect of it. There were some versions that people immediately were just, just didn't oh, yeah. like it at all. Um, <laughs> mountains and rivers and things that just were not popular at all decisions. We didn't bring those those to you. We brought our, our uh, best thinking. Joyce is trying to get your attention. Well, I just I just wondered maybe with the water instead of being that smooth like that, if it could be like more of a little like so it shows more of like a ripple and it was seen more like water. Yeah, or like yeah. A little, yeah. So yeah, I'll I'll, I'll and give I know he's been working so hard on yeah, it. Yeah, he he's done a couple versions like that. But we just you, don't. They don't translate to paper very well. That's what I was going to say. I mean, yeah. minus Texture details like that. like that when you're printing, and especially <laughs> if you're trying to print yeah, it makes out, sense. it's not going to come across. But I'm sure he'll, he, he would quickly mock something up and, you know, I could show it at another meeting, you know, if you wanted to see some variations. So to answer your question, I think what we'd like is to move, you know, your general approval. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a board motion, but to move forward with um, those mock-ups, knowing that we have control of them. We could change the colors, we can lighten things, but that we're, I'm, I've got the wrong thing showing. What's the likelihood of revisiting it later? If the board wants us to, then we'll do that. Okay. What if you took that right there and just took the river out? That's a, it's we, a, it's a, we have. That was, yeah, that didn't come out. It didn't look good at all. It yeah, it doesn't even look like a logo. It's just too blocky. Yeah. I think that one's pretty much the favorite. Yeah, just mm -hmm. make some waves. <laughs> I like that. I think they are. Make some waves. We'll be good. Just put the dam in there. Yeah, do that. Mm -hmm. Controversial. I think, a, I think there's a consensus that the second one is better than the first one, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I like that. Well, it's uh, it's actually a package. It's not one or the other right. kind of thing. He gave us different versions to use in different ways. Like a letterhead would be different than a postage stamp on a website kind of thing. So a smaller graphic would, would be on a website. General so question about the site. Is it, because um, I don't believe 
currently it is, is the new site going to be responsively designed? For mobile? Yeah. Yes, it is. <coughs> yeah. yeah, if you resize any browser, you, you'll see it. It'll okay. change. Yeah, the awesome. menus will change. Yep. Thank you. As well as um, um, accessible. Accessibility is a big yeah. issue. Yeah. I just have a suggestion that Megan be involved in the final project or something to special. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> have, have on this kind of stuff. She's, she's lifting your hand. Yeah. <laughs> right. I'm, pre I'm pretty sure the project's done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, I will. Uh, I'll certainly run that that suggestion by David and see if you can work up a couple of a um, couple of mockups for it. Thank All right, you. welcome. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah. So uh, I, I agree. We can move on with that logo, and if uh, the rest of the board agrees, and if you could show yeah, at least maybe email us those mockups. Sure. Show. Yeah. That'd be enough. Only will uh, only email them to your MVSD emails though. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. There you go. Like yeah. Yeah. All right, on to MOU with association. So because of the merging of the board, um, there uh, in a non-forced merger situation, you have a year and a half, and within ninety days, you're supposed to open negotiations, and you're supposed to do a bunch of things. We didn't have that luxury or that timeline. So what we were able to do is meet with Suzanne Dermeyer from the um, from NEA, the Uniserv director, as well as the union president, uh, and we discussed what our options were. Um, and what we brought to you today, something the union agrees with and administration supports, is that we're opening negotiations in the fall um, for both support staff and professionals, and that uh, the work of moving non-union folks to the master agreement um, because of the merger, so for example, custodians, custodians are covered by the master agreement here at MVU. As a merged district, all custodians under labor law will need to be part covered by that master agreement. That doesn't mean they have to belong to the union, it just means that the position is governed by the master agreement. So we have a memo of understanding that's essentially laying out what was done and that the parties agree that, um, for example, all non-union employees whose positions are now part of the master agreement for educational support personnel will be issued a union contract and placed on the wage scale and that those employees with benefits exceeding those in the master agreement will be grandfathered. So things like that were agreed to, so nobody, now they will negotiate whatever they negotiate, but in this interim, um, we have an interim agreement that's protecting all the parties. Um, that due to the shortened timeline of the imposed school merger, letters will be exchanged in the fall indicating the intent to enter into negotiations. Um, and that the 2017 to 2020 master agreements for educational support staff and professional staff will remain in place with all side letters. So we would be looking for um, authorization for the board chair to sign that agreement and negotiations uh, we can expect will begin in the fall. And one of the things you're gonna wanna do today is select committee members for negotiations committee. So, you know, one meeting a month. Yes, right. Yeah. <laughs> that goes till three in the morning. <laughs> okay, so let's start with the motion to authorize the board chair to sign the uh, MOU. So make that motion. I'll second. Discussion? Hear none. All those in favor of authorizing the board chair to sign the MOU, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Good morning. Can't vote anything. Sign up. Oh, First. I can't vote <coughs> Okay. I'll stand on self. Okay. So that'd be... I need to get signed in. B601. <coughs> and then... Uh, uh, anybody want to be on the negotiations committee? Need what? Two, three, right? Is that three? We usually use. 
you're going to tell me because I was a part of negotiations last time. Purette, do you have somebody from well, each we, town? Well, we had one well, from each did. board last well, time. Well, we had one from each town. If you, you know whether you want to continue to do that, it's up to the board. But uh, that's what we had. We had one uh, representative from each town. <laughs> So we want to stay in that faction, stay with uh, one representative for each town. I wouldn't think it, I, I wouldn't care. I'm not good at negotiations. So I don't, that wouldn't be my favorite group to join, committee, to be honest. Man. I'm a terrible no. negotiator. I don't have the bandwidth. Well, let's let's figure out how many is going to be on the, the committee first. So we're going to do one from each town. Is that how our little three member negotiating committee? Yeah. Okay, so we need. Yeah, uh, we'll start with Franklin. Who wants to do it from Franklin? Well, Devin is whispering yeah, to you that he can't, can't do it. I can't do it. <coughs> well, you yeah, could for support good. staff. Good for support staff. That's true. Is it a separate? We negotiate them separately. Yeah, we do separate. Committees? We do them separately. Yeah. yeah. You're going to have two different negotiations going on, right? Uh, yes. Okay, so we almost need two committees. Yeah. Then. Yeah. So let's start with professional staff, three members, starting with Franklin. Devin can't do it, so it's either Eric or uh, Peter. Peter. Peter's not here. So. <laughs> I'm all I see that in your eye. I like it. I like it. I was on vacation last year and I got signed up for negotiations so last year, yeah. so I'm all for doing that. Yeah. Yeah. A few that other works. things too. I think. When would this be heavy? When would this be heavy time using? Typically, when you're not here. Um, yeah, pointed question. Um, it's typically starts in the fall, but really doesn't get moving until winter. Until like February? Or Hopefully before that, but I mean, I think professional will have less to do than support staff. There's more coming together that needs to happen in the support staff master agreement. The professional would probably be done by February, do you think? But, I mean, I could do it if it'd be done by February. <coughs> Never know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd be available by by email, but that's not, that's not helpful. See, last year, last year it was easy. We had one meeting and it was done. But the uh, the last the time before that, I did a. It's boy, I think it was April before we got done. Right. So sorry, so that's not. Well, then this doesn't have to be someone from each town. I mean, right. truly, I mean, if you're we're all if you're struggling. Julie, tell us a little, when we're on the professional, but when we get the paraprofessional, can you tell us a little bit more in public session or do we get to the executive session, what the issues are? Well, if we were really talking about specific issues to be negotiated, you want to discuss that in executive session. Right. But it, to be clear, you have much more disparate uh, work conditions from school to school when you're looking at support staff. Okay. There's, right. you know, the so teachers have all been all one contract. It, yeah. it's, it's still one contract, but mm -hmm. there's a carve out for everything. So it's, it's employees are, are different depending on their assignment. Um, so there's a lot more to go through in general terms for the support <clears throat> staff. Doesn't mean you're going to get all of it in a single year. You know, I mean, that's always important to remember in negotiations that it's, you have to take bites at the apple, so to speak. Is it a one year contract or three? Like Depends what we negotiate. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, last time we did a full contract, we did, I think it was two years for professional and three years for support staff. It was so we could not have to negotiate them at the same time. <laughs> and then Act 46 happened, and bam, here we're doing it again. Well, and scene. Act 11, which is, you know, yeah. really the insurance coming out of our hands. Nobody was allowed to have more than a single year's agreement. So. Right. Okay, so to move this along, I'll volunteer to do professional staff and stuff. Hopefully we'll be done before March, because March I'll probably go. Not off the board, but I've got plans. Since I see Steve not jumping up and down, I'd also volunteer to do the professional <laughs> staff, unless you want to do it. But. That's Steve, oh, yeah, that's the other Steve. hiking. <laughs> oh, the guy. Mm -hmm. no. I'll, I'll do, I'm, I'm good at negotiations. I do that work, so yeah. Sweet. Nice. Yeah. So you're volunteering for support staff? 
Or, or both. both. Profession. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we only need one from high gear. So are you switching, or what do we do? If we I'm going to do one, I'd be willing to do professional. I'm not willing to do support staff. So you want to just support them? Yeah. That's going to be the harder one. Good. If you're Perfect. good at it, that may be a good place to yeah. sign you support. up. <laughs> you learn a lot in her. Yeah. yeah. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not bad. bad. Here it's not bad. Uh, professional okay, Eric. <clears throat> All right, so for professional staff, uh, Don Collins, Eric Borgard, and myself, we'll, huh? Wow. Wow. We'll make up attitude. the three member negotiation for professional. On to support staff, uh, Jen and Peter. <laughs> there you go, <laughs> Jen, Peter, and I gotta say I don't I don't have the bandwidth to do it. I'm gonna be off in March. Don't have the I don't have the bandwidth to do it. This not that time of year. So there's only three of us, and I'm off the board in March. So if we don't finish till April, so I don't think Swanton's gonna have anybody on the para. Well, we have to. We don't have to have Swanton. Yeah, just have to have another person. Wait. It is okay. all together. You don't have to have three people. You don't have to have three people. Uh -huh. to, you know, you, you can have. That, two that was just how it to. was before. Uh -huh. The only reason we have three is because we're trying to give representation to each town. But you know, two people it's totally can do up it. to you. I mean, I mean, I you know, you don't want someone starting and then not being there towards the end, do you? Well, I mean, you could, you know. If you, I think if it's if you want to serve for as long as you could serve, I'd be happy to do that. You no, know, if we're not done by March, then the the final two can probably finish it off. If you, you know, if you guys are okay with that, okay. who is it? Uh, Jen, Pete, and uh, okay, and you, you. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you, you want to do it? Yes, I'd be happy to until then. Thank All you. right. So our support staff is Jen and uh, Pete and uh, Derek. You get some sick pleasure out of that. Yeah. Hey, I can volunteer I know, for a I lot know. of stuff when I want to miss one board meeting, so. so I think board members are more than enough to go out this year. Be ready, it'll be yours the next time. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. Let me go back up to the business. Uh, so we're done with negotiations, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. So we're on to lease agreement information. Yeah, we did. You missed something. Well, that's oh, down in old. We would skipped. If you oh, want to sorry. do finance too, we can do that. We're skipping around. Might as well. May as well. We're done. Uh, Not you, you want to do the finance committee? It seems that you're already you're there. What? The finance committee is down lower. When we did the negotiate the Seven. MOU, then you jumped down to the committee assignments in old business. <laughs> oh, okay. That's, that's what no, we'll no, we'll, we'll stay right on. We'll keep going with uh, new business. Okay. We'll finish that up. Lease agreement. So I met with David Foskate, the landlord. We have, a, I believe it was a 15 year lease. That's correct. That is up this August. So of lucky us. Lucky us. I know, already. It was, uh, but it's 15 years. Wow. Um, I met with him today and we discussed terms. Um, uh, we're happy with the space. We talked about a few things that we'd like to change. He's going to work on the parking situation for us as much as we can. I mean, there's not a lot you can do there. He's um, not going to kick you out. <laughs> oh, gosh, no. no. Um, and, you know, I also reassured him we're not looking to build anything. No. Or, you know, uh, yes, it's cost effective to own property when you're a school district, but I assured him that the board does not have any preconceived thoughts about that right now. We don't, it's not on our radar. We've got a lot to do first. Um, so we talked about doing a three to five year lease um, that, you know, uh, which I understand from his, I think it protects both parties. We don't right. want necessarily another 15 year, um, mm -hmm. but within that time, we probably have more of an idea. If it, it, there's also not a ton of vacant real estate in the middle of our community that, you know, at any rate. Um, so I assured him that, you know, we weren't looking to do that at any time soon. Um, we haven't, he will increase the rent. It has not been increased uh, for three years. Um, and we're talking about a, a modest increase. I'll bring that to you uh, when it's prepared. We talked through, he's gonna look at taxes and work and work in the car. Uh, those kinds of things. We're working on your car, right? Work out of my car, yeah. sure. <laughs> no. I, we're, I, I, uh, it's been done before. <laughs> We're talking about um, 
you know, having a new sign out front that represents the school district, mm -hmm. um, things like that. Um, those wooden posts that are out there, Ugh. we're going to get rid of those. Mm -hmm. um, I saw those. I didn't, I didn't yeah, they're it. not great. <laughs> they used to be, they used to stick this far up and three cars and like, Oh, a couple God. of months sideswiped them and ripped the whole side of their car off because you can't, yeah, it was not a good oh couple of months. We've had a, a, a minimum of 10 to 15 cars that have oh. gotten dents, oh. scratches, and whatever from those posts. Yeah. Minimum. Now they're this tall. Yeah. Yeah, so now the bumpers are coming off. <laughs> 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 now the truck's <laughs> tired. <laughs> like, Apparently, no you have to drive as a They need to go. They <laughs> need to go. <laughs> so, and obviously, as a landlord, he has concerns about you know people parking on the grass and people parking right. in areas where the trucks should be and things like that. So we're we're talking through all those pieces, but um, it was a very positive meeting, and I don't expect any. There shouldn't be any major changes. Um, and he wanted to make sure the board, if there was something you were looking for, um, that you let me know. But uh, there was some concern a while back. Um, Whitney brought up about snow removal. Yeah, I mean, and ice. And I, right? I can't remember what the issue was exactly, but because he used to, it used to be included, right? And then we we ended we started to pay for it. Mm. So we have someone. It's done separately from the landlord now. I think because of that concern. Um, well, mostly because, you know, we need it done a lot more frequently as a public employer mm -hmm. than a private entity. Maybe we'll plow once, but we want sand more frequently. And mm -hmm. we want, you know. Well, what was in our original lease? Wasn't he supposed to plow it and maintain it and sand it? Right? Yeah. But that's no longer and the ice part coming of the lease. It's not, that's not, yeah. The snow does come off the roof. But. Well, he, uh, he he tries to do something so that people, when it comes to that time, he tries to put up barriers so that we don't get too close to the roof so that should the snow and ice fly off, that no one will get hurt. Are there any other options? They just put snow guards on there, or snow defenders on there. You mean right. the whole other problem? I understand. The, the biggest problem mm -hmm. is the water. Not the water, the amount of water that we have, and then it melts during the day and goes down, and then it freezes and it turns into ice. That's really the biggest issue. There's other that's going on. Well, if I'm correct, we don't have a paved parking lot, right? No. No, he's adding crushed gravel and stone. I really think we should talk with him about paving the parking lot. I really do. He said. You know, he's just building another multi-million dollar building over there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you're going to find that that's going to be pretty nice. And uh, they, do, they do have some pavement. Uh, the idea that we had an agreement with the plowing and now we've taken it over, I don't know if there's any money exchanged or reduced or whatever. Uh, I'm not trying to get out of there, but I just think, well, all the people that work there and come and go there, that should, that should be paid. That really should be paid. And, uh, it would be a good investment for him and his property as he goes forward. Yeah. So I, I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know if you feel uncomfortable negotiating <coughs> that. The board should be involved. But I think pay, a paved area uh, should be. Well, should I'm be happy to talk with him about it. See whether he's willing to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Uh, on to line of credit. Do we need, it says an action is needed. No, no, that was an agenda that amendment. That was if we had oh, the lease. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Is there a petition first? Huh? We were going to talk about the petition. Petition. Oops. Was it first, not I thought. It's not online. Not online. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, I didn't know. Do you want me to go? With? No, we can do the petition. Oh. It just wasn't on my agenda. <laughs> uh, the petition. Well, we had a petition filed we talked about it at our last meeting um, just that we received it and at this point there is no action required by the board um, but it has been filed and I didn't know Jay you're here I didn't know if you had more you wanted to you know, the, um, the people that were working on this petition <coughs> Uh, knew that they didn't get enough signatures that would be required of all three districts, so like 351 signatures in total. But what they decided to do is submit the petition anyway to reaffirm the desire that Franklin expressed at their town meeting day to vote on sale of their property. 
uh, percentage of 24 or 1061. So uh, it's more of a reminder at this point to realize that the board doesn't have doesn't have to take any action on it because they will get to it, the 5% of the voters from the three towns. But uh, it's just, again, another reminder that, that the action that was taken at the Franklin uh, town meeting uh, was consistent with uh, the 5%. And I believe there was 5% Franklin voters on that petition that would uh, not necessarily require you to do anything, but just as a reminder that we still voters in Franklin still would like to have the opportunity to strike as provided by statute. So, but there's other things that have happened since that petition with regards to the, um, the sale of property, which is one of the constitutional issues. That, that I was going to wait until the meeting was over, but I have an update from the courts uh, that I can fill you in. But as far as that petition is concerned, again, it's just a reminder that the people of Franklin uh, are still um, interested in having the opportunity to provide by statute to vote on the sale of the property. Uh, I think at this point we'll have to do some more investigation. Uh, I know we're looking into it legally, and uh, there's no, no action needed at this point, so it'll definitely have to come up again. But. Okay, uh, on to line of credit. Okay, so um, <coughs> a recent vote, the uh, community approved us um, borrowing money in anticipation of receipt of taxes, and that's typically a line of credit we borrow as needed. Um, we're in the process of um, working through a cash flow statement to provide to the bank, but I was looking for um, the board's approval of us awarding that to People's United, uh, who will... Um, who we'll be doing business with for all of our bank accounts, if you remember, um, for MVSD at least for the next year. What are the rush rate? On the line of credit, I don't, I don't know the rate yet. Um, I, they are usually very, very comparable from bank to bank anyway on the lines of credit. Um, but People's United Bank definitely gave the highest interest rate on the operating account. So I would anticipate, and if if I find that it is not what I feel is comparable, I will come back. Um, but in the, in the interest of time and and uh, facility of the process right now, if we could work with People's United, it would be much easier. I need approval of, approval of a recommendation. Second. A second. Uh, discussion. Here, none. Uh, all those oh, wait, I got a question. Sure. Can you just... Yeah. So, is this that bracket? one's that one's the next item. Oh, it's the yep. next item. Yep. Okay. It's also, People's United right Bank. Now. But yeah, yeah. Um, I would add that I would need all board signatures to that motion, so it would be. I, I, I guess it doesn't have to be part of the motion, but I would need all board signatures on that line of credit document when it's prepared. Oh, accepted. It's a friendly amendment. Thank you. All those in favor of uh, uh, approving to award the line of credit. Uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Uh, I think Terry has to abstain. She can't vote. So um, we'll come at the office to sign that. Please. If you can, before June 30, I, I'll let you know when it's ready, though. Yeah, I don't have it yet. Just with Terry's abstain. Terry can't vote. She can't do anything. She didn't get sworn in. Oh, she hasn't been sworn in? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, we didn't. <laughs> we didn't. Just go back and change all those numbers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So last month I brought you a proposal to uh, enter in an agreement for P cars with um, BMO. Uh, and since then, um, we had a significant, a quite lengthy meeting with People's United Bank, who will own all of your checking accounts for MVSD, and at least for the next year. And they have now a corporate account, credit card account, uh, that does not require a social security number from any individual, like board members, to open, and offers a cash back reward program. I. Um, contacted PCAR, the BMO and we could, I withdrew that application um, in, in interest of time and I wanted to propose that we move forward with the People's United version of the credit card uh, corporate account 
rather than uh, the P-card program that we've been using in the past. Um, the, again, the cash back will be, I think it's 1%, um, so it's just about the same as what our rewards were this year, um, but it's call, a call to Burlington versus a call into Canada when we have an issue. Um, local reps are very supportive. They've given us tons of information already. We would online uh, um, access the online reporting and statements in the same place that all of our bank accounts would be, which is just you know facilitates um, administration of the program. Um, I, I guess I'm looking to see if you'll reconsider the P card approval and, and allow us to move forward with these cards. It would be issued the same exact way with the same parameters, um, same administrative oversight. Uh, same fraud prevention. Um, it would be a People's United Bank business card program, um, and it, it, with people businesses with an annual card spend of up to a million. Um, but it allows us to take advantage of that reward program, which is basically a one percent cash back that we um, just—it's uh, a transfer right into our checking account. And that happens monthly. It can happen whenever we want. Yeah. Um, I just want to ask about the credit <coughs> unions. Um, any FCU, I, I hear really good interest rates there. But People's United, you're, you're People's United was the high. We, we went out. We went out to bid when we awarded the operating account, right. and um, they gave us a much higher interest rate of one point nine. But I worked with P cards before, so I, yeah. I know it's, it's P cards is like a reward program, yeah. and it yeah. has to do with national usage through the Illinois ASBO as well as our usage. So it's usually somewhere between one. One to one and a half percent is what it's been. Um, this would be a one percent cash back. I just feel like um, the opportunity costs on our time managing the program means a little bit too. Uh, paying hourly employees for the oversight of the program. Um, so I think I think we'll end up with the same rebate, but I, just a an easier program to administer. And I like the idea of local and just being able to call Burlington if we have a fraud right. charge or some yeah. issue with our account. Yeah. And, and um, you know, we've dealt with People's United Bank for a long time with some of our schools, and they have all, they're extremely responsive. So, and, and, and um, I will bring that to you later. It will be around what we have right now, which is school, all, with all the schools around 30. It's one corporate account now, though, instead of each school having their own. It would be one corporate account. Um, we've done some research around usage. I'm asking for an overall credit limit of um, 150000 a month. Um, because, again, if we're trying to utilize them as much as possible to get the 1% cash back. Um, but, again, I always like to say that this, when we use these P cards, it follows our accounts payable process exactly the same way as any other bill. And so, you know, all the backup is there. The POs are still done. Reconciliations are done, yes. And there's multiple people with their eyes on this program, mm -hmm. so it's not just myself or an AP clerk. Right. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm asking for a company credit limit of 150000 I'm sorry, the monthly spend is 50000 50, Um This one's structured a little bit different. Um, it, it's totally up to you. I'm happy to move. I'm not, it's not that we're unhappy with the P-Card program. I just feel like this is a better fit for us right now as far as working with People's United at, um, on, with our operating account. So your motion, our motion needs to indicate that we want to move away from the P card and towards this. What you're saying, no, or can no, we? This, just this one just has to be separate. Yeah. Just change it to People's United instead of. So we would have to have resend a, our previous motion. You would be card. what you would be doing is approving um, this P card resolution form for Mississippi Valley School District to enter into a business card agreement. Um, with People's United Bank, and then I would just give Pierrette the rest of the language. I think everyone was emailed this mm -hmm. document. Um, it also gives myself, Becky Hart, and Robin Bluen, who is your treasurer, the authority to, to manage the program and access the information. Do we have to do anything to rescind what we did I, last time? I don't time? think that you have to. That was my question. Do I don't believe, to? Julie would maybe know, I, I've already withdrawn the application. It didn't get to the point where any 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 paperwork actually had been processed. I had sent it in, but it hadn't been processed. So I don't know if there's anything the board would need to do there. I don't think you need to send it. You just won't follow through. Right. We'll right. make it very clear in the minutes that you're uh, making a change. Chris, I know Jen change. had some questions. Uh, yes. Yes. So on the back page, you have the commercial business card interest rate fee schedule, and then you have the, <clears throat> excuse me, 
optional business card service fees? Yeah. Are, are you doing... None of those apply to us. Okay. Um, this was an informational page. I probably shouldn't even have included this. This is an... Inf- I, I did. I did ask. I that. Yeah, I, I know. Like, I asked all of those that? all of those questions. Um, no, we we will have no fees for anything. Um, we get to pick the kind of statement we want. There's no extra charge for that. There's. All, um, I shouldn't have included this. I'm sorry. No. Okay. Um, this was this is uh, relevant to some of the other accounts that they offer, so they included it. And one other quick question is um, the fifty thousand a month that you project that you're going to be using the card for. I just kind of want to know what types of things you use the card for. Um, well, and the reason that I asked for 150000 is um, because in the beginning of the year, we try to use it for all of our supplies as much as we possibly can. So all those huge classroom orders, paper, you know, everything, markers, markers yeah, all of that stuff, we really try to use it for everything. Um, we do try to use it for utilities as much as we can, but some companies won't let us, but that's a huge bang for your buck as far as getting the cash back. Um, we, really, we really use them for just about anything, professional development. Um, so what about college coursework for professional development? Not for coursework necessarily, but trainings, workshops, those <clears throat> kinds of things, yes. Airfare, if someone's traveling, or um, um, hotel is stays. Is the coursework because we haven't pursued it or they don't allow? I guess I, I don't know if we've really pursued that with, with like UVM or St. Michael's College. I guess I, don't I would ask have. you, a, not, I don't say be a prior, but investigate Yeah. That. Yeah, I didn't even think about that, to be honest with you. I was focused on the utilities, because I thought that would be, and I, I was not impressed that, like, Vermont Gas won't allow us to use it. They have, like, a threshold, and if you're over a threshold, you can't because use they don't a know card. So I've asked right. them if we could, I'm like, I'll have our AP clerk call in three times to make three separate payments. <laughs> they, so they said they no. <laughs> the they pushed us to use that P card. Yeah, yeah. And again, if I wasn't assured that this had the same fraud protection and all of that, I wouldn't be recommending it. But yeah. okay. So uh, everything, as much as we possibly can, yeah. So that you can get the ca- the the one percent cash, cash back, back, back into yeah. the account. Yeah. 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 Well, I think it was a couple of years ago that I, I did a little investigating and sure where the numbers said <clears throat> there was some <clears throat> there was a couple of issues uh, where. Our, the check warrants actually showed the use of the P card for a number of, I don't want to say inappropriate, but there was some questionable type charges that were on there. One that comes to mind was a charge for a room at Disney World. And that was for a conference for professional development, and actually the room was quite <coughs> quite minimal cost. But the reservation, the, the charge on the P card was made two days before Christmas, <coughs> according to the dates. That. But at any rate, I just don't want to, I don't want to labor that part of it, but it's the <coughs> other the reason why I bring this up is because the transaction that's taking place with, with a P card or a credit card already automatically disperses, disperses the funds before the board has an opportunity to review those in the form of the check. The, so, the funds are not dispersed until the, the, the uh, ACH withdrawal date of our checking account, which is after the bills have been reviewed. Okay, so just as long as those those purchases made with, with a P card are reviewed by this board prior to dispersing the funds. They are. They are. Okay. It should be. Yeah. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to uh, approve a People's United corporate credit card. I'll make that motion. Um, and to have the have board clerk sign the resolution. Oh, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so do I need to change? Keep, keep no, Pira will, will fill in the right language. All right. Um, I'll second the motion. Get the actual document. No, that's not. It would be the. Uh, it would be uh, Erica, right? Not no, this Megan. is the board. The board. They the, this board. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, any discussion? Any further discussion? Ty. So uh, maybe I, I don't understand it enough. Where does the one percent go back to? It will go. Well, it will go actually on to our one of our cards. So when they take, make the ACH withdrawal, the pull every month, which is required to pay your card in full, they will take that much less. Okay. Once we tell them that we're ready for them to do that, we have to actually kind of like turn it on. Right. Yeah. But how do you post that? As 
revenue. You didn't figure that out yet. I think it should be as revenue. Yeah. Oh, it definitely should it's be. Definitely be a, credit back to expenses. It definitely should be as revenue, but we haven't figured out how we'll reconcile it in our system. It'll probably be a journal entry, but I haven't. We're, yeah. I'm, I'm asking yeah. Infinite Visions about it should be that. Should credit back to office supplies. Yeah. Or whatever. No, we'll definitely have to show it as revenue. Yeah. 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 You mentioned something about tailoring the statements. Um, that they're able to do. They can send all separate statements for each individual card, or they can send you one statement that is for every single card, but it's on one, one, one statement, and then I think that's sufficient because we typically don't even wait for those to come. We log in as soon as we're ready to do an AP run or we have going through bills, and we pull all the information there. So is that what you meant? Right. So there's... Is there like a, the, there's a name attached to the card, or is that is there a the card only that's card that we, I believe the only card that card that we will have that has a name on it would be Julie's. The rest are department cards. So we have a curriculum department card. We have a business office card. We have a professional development card. It's just much easier for us to track the, that way what we're doing. Um, is, are they assigned to the schools too that way? Like there's a Highgate um, School District has one card. Swanton has multiple cards right now, but I, I'm asking them to review how they were using them in the last two years, see if that's appropriate. But traditionally, like uh, facilities has a card in the schools. Um, Franklin doesn't have a card right now, um, but that would be something that. But to track that spend, like he's talking about, is each school to track that spend should be a credit back to expenses in a in the line item. On the income statement, really? I mean, no, it's gonna, it'll show us revenue. Okay. Yeah. But by location? No, it's miscellaneous revenue. That's the how we're, we would be, we would have to record it that way. The one percent, you mean? Yeah, yeah, it's miscellaneous revenue. It doesn't get credited back to the line in which it was raised by, you know, it's raised by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can't. We, we can never net those kind of revenues out. They okay. make us show it on the revenue side. Okay. Jay. So then I can understand this, Laura. I, don't, I won't belabor it, but yeah. somebody makes a purchase with a P card. How long is it before the, per, the, the, the seller receives the money? The seller receives the money, but we don't pay. That's from the credit card company, which is what you, why you're using the credit okay. card. It's withdrawn from our account on the day that we choose each month. I, I can't tell you that date right now because we haven't chosen it yet. So if somebody makes a purchase with a team card, mm -hmm. they get the item, the board sees a check mark, and they decide not to approve the purchase from the team card, then what happens? We have to either cancel it or return it. Yeah. It's a, it's a, this is a national program um, that, it, and I have checked specifically with the Agency of Education and the auditor around this, and they said that it's definitely within our authority and the board's authority. I'm, to use. Not, yeah. I'm not questioning that. Yeah. I'm just saying that I'm yeah. they, we concerned could. with using the fee card to make a purchase mm -hmm. and having the funds uh, delivered to the person that you're buying something from, and this mm -hmm. board sees a purchase that they don't agree with, and they decide to not. Prove it's, that. it's reversed. We, we would have to pursue getting a refund if it gets to that point, but it's only once a month that the withdrawal happens, too. Yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, it may be I a, understand your point. Methodology or anything. It is, yeah. It's to it, like the, the rebates and stuff like that. But yeah. it just seems like. We have we have actually had it happen, and I did have the charges reversed. It's only happened one time that I had to do that, and I did get the money back because the board did not approve the, the warrant. But I see what you're saying. It doesn't look great. Unfortunately, um, right now we're without P cards, and it is almost impossible to operate a business with some certain functions without a credit card. <laughs> um, not everyone accepts a purchase order. Not everyone will allow you to come there to buy an item, um, and so we always struggle when, like, I shut them off two weeks ago and until we, we get new cards. And Dina and the principals can probably attest to this. It's the amount of emails I get saying, this person doesn't take that, they don't take that, they'll only take a credit card. You know, it's just unfortunately the world we live in now. Um, do, do you have a policy for the use of the P-card? I believe we do. I think we had one last year. We have implemented procedures one. for P-cards, so that would be Procedure, something yeah. we would review. Uh, you know, the, policy of, then the policy it falls under is our accounts payable process. So in your policy, does it specify that P-cards can't be used for personal purchases? 
It, that, I believe, is in our procedure for P cards, but the policy it falls under is the AP policy, the financial policy. I'm talking about a document that, that describes how the P card is going to be used by staff. Will they call it a policy? Or we have a P card procedure. I'm, I would have to review it to see how specific it is. Because yeah, um, I remember during this discussion, I sent you a copy of the policy used in, I believe, it was no. And uh, it, I thought it uh, answered a lot of concerns that I'd had. If you not, I could send you another copy. Of that. Sure, I have I have samples as well. Um, but I know the one the procedure that we had um, utilized was okayed by our auditing firm too. Mm -hmm. There's a reconciliation process too. Do we have a yes, board? and it gets audited and they get reviewed by the board. Yeah. Uh, is it, is uh, the procedure we have for the P card something that we will be reviewing now we're merging? Is that something no, in the we'll future? We'll update it and share it with the board. We have to because it's not P cards anymore. Now it's going to be a corporate credit card. So, account, so. at this point, when we update the uh, procedure, we can make sure that it's to our linking at that point? Absolutely. Okay. So, uh, if there isn't any more discussion, uh, are we ready to vote? All those in favor of approving the People's United Corporate Credit Card, same five by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Ocean carry 7 0. Thank you. I'm sorry you had to duplicate that work. Uh, financial management. Uh, internal controls. Okay, that, that I believe was sent out um, to the board as well. And it's really just informational at this time. If you remember some of you a couple years ago, um, the state has asked that we complete this questionnaire every year just to kind of make sure we're thinking about checks and balances and who's opening mail versus writing checks and where we're storing checks and all those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. So um, this is actually not something that needs um, the board's signature, but I just wanted you to be aware that this is stuff that we pay attention to. One, because the state tells us to, but also because it's good practice, it's best practice. And so I just wanted you to see the items on here. Um, you know, do we use pre-numbered checks? Yes, we do. Um, um, are we audited by a CPA? Yes, we are every year, as well as the federal and state government in many different aspects. <coughs> um, do we have an auditing planning practice? Yes, we do. Um, bank statements are not reconciled by the same people that pay bills. All, all those kinds of things. So just as an awareness to the board um, that you know, we are doing our due diligence on the financial end as far as what we're taking, uh, paying attention to. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if anybody had any questions about it or concerns, but. Okay, Thanks for point, sharing it. At some yeah. point in the future, the finance committee may want to see the uh, completed. Yes, it's it, yes. going into MVSD, I right. didn't yet. Yeah, but yes, we will. <clears throat> okay. Uh, we're done with new business, on to old business. Uh, board member code of ethics. We tabled this until we had a full board. Yeah. We're pretty darn close to a full board tonight, so. Close enough for horseshoes. Big thing. So. <coughs> Thank you. Do you need a motion first to adopt that? Yes. I move that uh, all board members yeah. complete. Second. I'll second. Eric. Steve. What was the second? Okay. Oh, sorry. <coughs> Discussion. I've got more of them. Anybody need them? Any discussion? Oh, everybody's reading.
Is that a resolution that's supposed to be signed by all board members? The resolution, no. The line of credit documents, yes. Okay, where is it? Uh, I was yeah. going to email you when that was prepared for the line of credit. I don't have it yet. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. Right. The resolution um, Megan signed as the clerk. Okay. Yep. Thank you. So hearing no discussion, all those in favor of approving the uh, board member code of ethics signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries 7-0. Passing down the purette because she holds on pieces of paper better than I do. This is the 19th. It is the 18th. Tomorrow is the 19th. Yeah. We have our celebration. Julie? Yes, sir. The one on not agreeing to hire a teacher uh, when you have a contract, is that faithfully followed by all of your colleagues? Oh, where are we? Oh, probably two thirds way down. You, you agree not to hire superintendent, teacher, principal, and the contract. Oh, teacher. yes, actually, that's a great one to bring up. Um, a few years ago, there were some problems with that in another area of the state where people were, you know, in, in places where it's hard to recruit. Um, they were actually poaching teachers under contract from one another. Mm -hmm. So the Vermont superintendents um, made an agreement. Uh, even though uh, it is in statute that you mm -hmm. shall not hire a teacher under contract to another district. Um, there was sort of a resolution, if you will, I don't know what it formally was, to make sure that that did not happen. So, I mean, even just this year during hiring season, if there was somebody who notified a principal um, when they were scheduled for an interview, um, that they were actually, oh yeah, well, I signed my contract last week. I called the superintendent and got permission from a superintendent to interview um, before we can go ahead with that. Mm -hmm. And we make sure that people notify and get permission from their superintendent before they interview. Because mm -hmm. there's not a heck of a lot we can do, um, but by statute, people can lose their license, actually. They well, that just happened too much, particularly in August. Yes, especially when it's a hard to fill position and it's really we don't have a ton of protections, so at least we have that. Mm. Okay, uh, back to forming some committees, uh, finance committee. We were gonna revisit that after we had a full board. Currently it's Devin, Steve, <coughs> and that's it, right? Yep. Do we wanna change it, leave it the way it is? I'm fine with leaving it the way it is, personally. What is the yeah. what are we having our finance committee doing at this point? We have not talked about having a separate mm -hmm. meeting um, because we're going to have two board meetings a month. Um, and that we should be able to do all of our business together, but the finance committee would come in and Well, it's up to Laura. What does she need from us? We, we were having you... The, the only thing I worry about is having three is if it requires three signatures and we're mm -hmm. missing somebody, that becomes problematic if we need to pay things like a P-card invoice, and that's why it, it works, because you're meeting every two weeks and we can get it done. Um, I, I just would ask that maybe we a majority of the signatures from a financial committee or something like that if you're going to have three so we're not if someone's absent from a meeting we don't need all three to pay a bill because sometimes getting those signatures How after a board meeting you? holds things up does one it, it's well, that's your com that's your comfort level uh, you know the, 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 the statute be. around this and board approval of and review of bills is gray so the, the um, treasurer can only sign checks after the board has, has approved and reviewed bills and given him the authority to do that. Um, but it doesn't say how that has to happen. So that's your board's discretion to, to, to delineate that. And we made some of those decisions when we organized, correct? Around certain, like for instance, the utility bills, you've given me the authority to pay those bills without having them be reviewed. Uh, they, well, they're reviewed when the warrants come, but I can pay them prior to approval. Um, is the bill review, is that, does that work the same way as it has? I would bring them every two weeks and ask that they be reviewed or 
if you're willing, I would prefer that once a week someone comes into the office, but I realize that's probably not um, doable, so. That's not really a hardship for me. Yeah. Uh, I just feel like at a board meeting sometimes we don't have time for questions right. I, and thorough review, I, so I would prefer, or I can bring them to a place that works for you guys or have the AP clerk bring them in. Um, before we decide how many meetings, maybe we should decide who's on the committee. Yeah, that's, but it's totally uh, your discussion. Huh? I think that's part of it. Yeah. Because it's totally it, up to you We're guys. trying to think about if we wanted a third person, if, if Matt, because you didn't <coughs> sign up for negotiation, so I'm just picking on you because you're right here. Um, <laughs> but, you know, if, if, it, if the role, it's not about having a separate meeting, so that is sort of a decision on who wants to be on the committee. That these are the folks whose signatures go on the warrants, correct? The finance committee. It the, would go on the warrants, but right. the, whole, the whole the entire board makes a motion to right. approve the warrants, but that's following mm -hmm. the payment. What I need is somebody to review the bills and say I can issue the payment. And the more frequently that happens, it it just makes our life easier in our office. But I realize it doesn't so for you guys. Longer, so. MVU, you that the finance committee might have power for the regular board meeting. I would really like to stay away from that if we could because I don't find that to be an effective use of time. I feel like our meetings oftentimes get side, not, I'm not trying to well, speak poorly of them. Uh, I think they were better before we got the building project. <clears throat> I can remember four years ago, I thought it was really stayed on finance mm -hmm. and a couple of people provide leadership mm -hmm. and any board member could go. Once we got into the building project, I think it's deteriorated. Maybe that's the wrong word, but it seemed to be more focused on the building project and uh, how are things going and how much money do we need and how are the bids. So to be honest, Laura, when you come with that big pile of warrants and, mm -hmm. and I'm doing those during the Meeting. Right, right. I and I will. I want you to have the opportunity to ask questions and maybe yeah, pull yeah, bills yeah. more so back up for you if that's what you want. And I definitely, I go through them. I but was, I also realize you have jobs, so whatever works for you. But I, we're ha we're happy to come to you if that's easier. What whatever works yeah. for you guys yeah, to make that easier. But I would like the opportunity for you to have more thorough and more dedicated time for that. It's worked well with. I I don't know how it's not how it's been done in the other towns so far, but in Swan when. They do. They pick Sue them emails, up. we pick them up, we go through them. Mm -hmm. Whoever gets them first drops them off at the other person. Mm -hmm. I just they worry if we did them three, then, that it that would take be much longer. Like, yeah. Yeah. Right. Two maybe, works maybe, well. Maybe as long as two out of like the three leave. sign it. But maybe. keeping in mind, like taking the bills out of the keeping, keeping in mind the stacks because yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 every two yeah. is 37 yeah. million, yeah. not, you know, and, broken And that's down. why I think right. that having folks <laughs> come into central right office on a regular basis to have that conversation, to have the ability to meet the accounts payable folks, to get back up. And because of the volume, it's ideal. It's much better than bringing something in a bucket to. Because that's literally what right. you would I, just, I feel so, like you don't have the opportunity to really. Work. I guess the, the questions to figure out are um, would we like to have require two signatures on the bills before they're paid, or is one sufficient? Um, and would we like to add a third member to the Finance Committee? Um, those are kind of two questions for the board. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking if you want two signatures, then out of three of you. See, I'd be comfortable. I have no problem going to a three-member board, so each town's represented. I think that's fine, and I also agree with at least two signatures. Mm -hmm. I don't really feel comfortable with one, but uh, I think two out of the three is enough in my mind. I don't know about the rest of the board, but I agree with Chris. I'm going to get a little bit on a soapbox, uh, so probably the TV will come this way. But you know, we were really lucky last week with all the talk about no budget and people not getting proper information. And I want to commend Laura and Julie and everybody else that got that next sheet out, gave it to the town clerks and everything. I thought that was really good. Uh, but we've been on a lot of pressure from the state, changing its mind, seemed like every month. Mm -hmm. uh, but to pull that off with a vote we got, it wasn't a big turnout, but it was a decisive result of those who came out. I just think we need to, even if it means a little extra work or extra work, I think we need to put our best foot forward to show the people that not only are we responsible for finances, but are record keeping us. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I don't think the burden should all be on central office. I think as a board, if, if we need to have multiple people there, if we have to have two signatures or whatever, that's fine. But I, I just think in this first year, I don't want to have to have somebody ask me a question and say, oh no, you know, it's, that's not happening. Well, anyway, I'll get off my soapbox, but. Uh, well, we agree totally. Yes. I mean, 
are on the same page, Good. The, the two of us will figure it out. But if you want a third, that's okay too. Uh, just in case some one of us can't be there. See, I, I go for three only because you know you never know. Somebody might have to stay late at work. Maybe yeah. you have a family issue for takes two weeks of time away. Yeah. And you've got the third person. No problem. So but I would only need two signatures to issue payment. Right. Two is fine. The first two I guess. Right. Three people you can okay. contact. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yeah. So who who would like to all right, so our finance committee is gonna be Devin, Steve, and Megan. Uh, we're gonna, and then we're gonna need a motion to allow them to approve the check warrants with two signatures out of the two out of the three. I, I can issue payment with them. Yeah. And then I guess the last part is how often do you want to meet? That's up to her. I don't necessarily think that we need to meet. I can make them available and people can come to our office, but I don't want to disregard what you're saying. I just, I, I like the idea of coming to our office only because I have everything there that you could possibly want to see. So if it's how many, you know, I don't want to just look at this bill. I want to look at the last 12 months to see, then I can answer those questions. And I feel like then I'm providing you with a decent answer. I, I have a hard time doing that at a board meeting. So, yeah, so we don't need a board meeting to approve. No. Uh, I think we'd you just have to have the I think we let the members work that out with Laura. We'll figure out there. meetings mm -hmm. as needed. It just cannot be any longer than every two weeks. I would prefer it's every week if we can at all make that happen, but no longer than every two weeks would be great. We probably coordinate. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. She's closest. And I, there's people there early and there's people there late almost yeah. every day, okay. too. So. Yeah. so then I guess all we need is a motion to approve the. Uh, committee members and the two out of three signatures. So moved. Discussion? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries 7-0. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay. Policies. Oh boy. Oh, uh, on committees, is there still a Villains and Grounds Committee? For Not as of right now. <laughs> is there going to be? <laughs> we have to figure that out. Uh, I would have, uh, first we got to figure out how to manage four schools, you know, so. Careful, Robert. I, it's definitely uh, work for the summer. We're going to figure all that out. It definitely needs to stay on your radar. Um, it's too much. I've been in this business a long time, and to expect a building the grounds director to make all the decisions on their own without any input from public or board members is asking for failure and asking for... I, I don't disagree with you one bit. It's just, just right now we're just trying to get up and walking before we start <laughs> running. You know what I'm saying? No, I, absolutely. Yeah. Good point. Yep. Okay. So... As we're going into policies, um, I want to thank people for giving input. Um, I want to let people know I went through every single comment. Um, I have the way that, I have this, I have post its for every comment. Wow. Um, She's but, very thorough. Um, what I do want to say is there were a number of questions um, that are less related to policy and more related to, well, are there copies of this thing that we can see in the future? What are the procedures around that? Uh, and those are all pieces that we'll be happy to share with you as we move along. Um, for example, some of these policies require procedures or there were some comments that would be, well, where's some of the detail? Um, and those would typically be in procedures um, one that springs to mind is student attendance. One of the comments was around, you know, number of days and things like that. We have a truancy protocol that is shared um, among all of Franklin County. We have a truancy panel that the state's attorney sits on and the DCF sits on and things like that. And that's all information that we can share moving forward. Um, the other <coughs> things that I want to make sure that the full board knows uh, is that Many of these policies are, the language is in statute, so we're not really able to expand or um, change the legal language around definitions or 
expand the rights. Um, the comments were actually very positive and very um, supportive of expanding rights for students and things like that. But we would be going, I think we would, one, because these have been warned as is, we can make small changes, but if we were to do something radical, we need to be looking at um, redoing it in the future. So I wanted to make that point. Um, and then if you like, um, and I am happy to answer any questions as we go through. Um, I also want to thank whoever it is that caught all of the little typos in things. Thank goodness for you. Um, because uh, there were lots of ofs instead of twos and things like that. And um, these came from the model policy site and then were just our school district name and a few changes here and there. Um, but those those changes have been made in real time. Um, what is interesting about the way we have it set up, and I think I can show you without messing things up. Let's see if we can. Information, district policies. So we, um, Rusty Gregory set up a, a drive so that when we have a policy in a Google Doc, in our domain, and I type in the change, you know, there's a two instead of an of or, or whatever, um, that it shows up right on the website. So we don't have to remember That's the nice. change. That's nice. So here's an example I highlighted so you could see. <coughs> so I did this on a folder on my computer in the Google Docs, and um, Steve asked at our last meeting, we had had another section that was qualifications, um, and obviously it certainly made sense to have that sentence move under unlicensed persons, because if you're licensed, you have a high school diploma. So I just moved that there, and I indicated that I did, and it showed up there. Now, I did not do that for all of the other changes that I made. I just wanted to highlight that. Um, what's nice is, uh, and, and Devin will appreciate that, given the version control of deeds we were going through last evening, mm -hmm. uh, it, we kept seeing one version after another. It's so clean, you know. Uh, it, it's you, you go in, you see something you want to change, it's changed, and it's immediately posted. Yeah. Um, that way, it's also not a folder that would be shared with the universe because no, yes. Megan could go in and accidentally change all the policies, <laughs> as I'm sure she would be want to do. But I wanted to share that. Um, and again, these are the mandated policies that we need to have in place by the start of school. So these are common amongst all schools throughout the state. I'm sorry, Eric. These are common throughout or amongst all schools throughout the state. Absolutely. If you go to any school website and look at their policies, most of these are going to look identical, especially the big ones like hazing, harassment, and bullying. I mean, that's like right out of statute. Um, so absolutely those will look the same. I will point out um, the firearms policy. One of the comments that was made was, could we make it stronger in a couple of ways? And actually, it made me think of Maple Run's policy in the work because I was there for that. Um, and they actually did make it stronger. They added some weapons language, and they added some language I think this board would like to see in the future, which is about encouraging others to use or bring a firearm or device or any kind of thing. Uh, and that, that I, I pointed that out to you, too. Yes, and it was really positive. So what I would, I don't believe you can adopt that tonight. I would recommend you adopt the standard firearms policy tonight, and we bring it to you for your review, and you can adopt an, an updated one. Um, because, because I really like it. It, it. it actually has language saying, you know, that you're subject to disciplinary action. I mean, consistent with the law. But you're as guilty for encouraging someone to bring a weapon to school, uh, goading them, knowing about it ahead of time and not telling anyone. I mean, it's a very clear uh, statement that I think this board would like to see. But again, we need to have at least the, the language that is um, in the Gun Free Schools Act in, you know, when we go operational. But I think that would be a good one to bring to you. And 
I promise we will not bring you 27 policies in a single swoop ever again. We will come out with the recommended policies in groups of two or three. The administrative team will have had time to look at them. We have this on tape, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> Do you think Joyce and Dina are not going to hold that? <laughs> but we will we'll bring them in group manageable bites. Absolutely. So I didn't know what your pleasure was. Um, I do know that we, we specifically talked about the wellness policy, mm -hmm. and I had some information to share with you on that. But I also don't want to jump all over the place. So Chris, mm -hmm. I don't know if you have any direction for me. I feel like I need some direction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like we should just start at the top and work our way down. All right. Do you want to then approve move. them one at a time? Yes. I was thinking maybe we could lump them together by A, B, them that way or do we have to do each individual one we could do them well a is easy um but we could then look at each group and then see if there's you know when we're ready does that make sense can well, i ask the thing is with me julia I, I already slammed you with my questions oh you so had great questions I, so i you know i'm depends on what the rest of the board wants to do but I did and have some questions. You answered them in minutes. So. Well, you know, it's you, Steve, so yeah, of <laughs> get right there. <laughs> well, I've been working Whatever on Whatever that them. means. I've been, I've been, <laughs> <laughs> I'm very responsive to I don't everybody. usually say too much, but... Can I ask a favor? I have to leave tomorrow for Alaska on a really early flight. Do you guys mind if I, since I can't vote, I will vote next time if I take off? You're going to Alaska? Maybe tomorrow morning. Oh, no, been Alaska. there. Love it. First time. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I just... Exactly. I'm jealous. Thank you. <laughs> a wedding. A wedding. Oh, that's all right. I'd that is nice. That would be nice. I wish I knew somewhere, <laughs> someone you. somewhere. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> somewhere, somewhere. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Terry, for coming. Terry, I want so back to what we were saying, uh, how about we uh, lump them together by category, okay. and then if we have questions within, when we ask for discussion, any questions can be brought up at that point. Okay, so you want to go for a motion for... Yep, let's go for a motion to approve board, which is only one board member conflict of interest. I'll make that motion. second. <clears throat> Discussion. There were no comments on this one. So you'll, you'll communicate the, the comments and the questions for yep. whichever ones that were Yes, I made notes. And we have a couple of administrators in the room, so. If I'm sure they have opinions. Yeah, it's your least. I'm nice to hear as well. <laughs> Hearing no discussion, uh, all those in favor of approving a uh, category of board members, which is just one board member conflict of interest, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries 7 0. Uh, next one up, I'll entertain a motion for employees, which there's seven policies under this one. I'll make that motion. Did you want to hear what the questions were? Can we get the discussion first? Yeah. Hang on. Second. Second. Thank you. Discussion. So. Yep. I'm going to actually unplug because I can't really go. I, I want to look at, I may want to look at the comments in the Google survey and there were people's confidential comments and, you know, trying to, in case a post-it fell off my notebook. So, substitute teachers, um, we discussed, the only change was the one we discussed in the last meeting that Steve made, we made that change and moved that qualification under unlicensed persons, so that was changed. For volunteer and work study, um, there was a recommendation that in the last part, it says a person who is on the Vermont Internet Sex Offender Registry shall not be eligible to be a work study student. The recommendation was that it should also state volunteer, which is true, and I would not approve it. And so I made that change and stuck it in that sentence. I think that was a nice, since it's volunteers and work-study students, it made sense mm -hmm. to have both of those there. 
The third was alcohol and drug free workplace. So again, this is just employees. Um, there wasn't anything under this. Somebody, there wasn't anything under this. I think in another area, somebody asked the question, but what kind of results would happen if you uh, broke this policy? And, and the answer to that is you would be as an employee subject to disciplinary action, um, which could be lots of things depending on the circumstances. Um, before was drug and alcohol testing of transportation employees. There were no comments there. B5 uh, was employee harassment. Um, I did update the designees. There were a couple of comments about why the age of 40, and the answer to that is because of the Age Discrimination Act of 1967, which apparently if you're 39, you're not subject to age discrimination, but if you are 40, um, you are protected, and so that's federal law. Thank God. <laughs> Just made that one. <laughs> <laughs> But again, yeah. you know, there's certainly, there are certainly, uh, we want to be clear that there's a difference between what is an age discrimination and what is just misconduct or poor conduct. And those things are dealt with, it just doesn't fall under that protected category. Um, and the, I, I would not recommend making any um, expansions <clears throat> under the law because. We actually had a policy previously that was not um, consistent with the law, and it was very broad, and that can end up creating a lot of issues for administration and um, uh, legal issues for the school district. Um, but it is a, a it, it follows the law and the administrative training, uh, administrative training in how we need to investigate designate people to investigate uh, and address complaints of discrimination um, are covered here. Also, I think there are differences between employee um, harassment and the student policy. <coughs> and the reason why there are differences there have to do with age and the fact that in some cases it's, uh, you know, children <coughs> that we have a duty of care versus adults um, that we have different levels of protection around. So those were the questions there. <coughs> and again, because these are um, these are written clearly in statutes and federal laws, um, it's not something we would really want to change any of the definitions or language, even when they are um, thoughtful and good ideas, but they would be expanding, I think, the requirements of the law. Um, I feel like I'm rushing, jump in and... I would like to just point out that I did talk to you about this too, Julie. Yep. The confidentiality in that section B. For which one, I'm sorry? Well, sorry. all of them. I just think that the confidentiality... We don't talk about confidentiality for the student as far as any issues in regards to employee harassment. And so on. Um, um, same thing with C. Same thing. So by law. I know, but the, I didn't see the verbiage. Well, we have education records, which includes, you know, so when we get into C, we have particular policies around confidentiality. Okay. Um, and then the procedures also around harassment <coughs> investigation. So if I'm investigating uh, an adult in our school district and yeah. I need to, in, uh, interview students. Um, I, there is a procedure by which you speak okay. about confidentiality. So outside of this? At, yes. Okay. Okay. But you're right. I mean, confidentiality is a very important part of a lot of well, the protections so. that we do. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, and the next, I'm sorry. That was B5. B6 is Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act compliance. That had no comments. It's a very straightforward paragraph. Um, tobacco prohibition, which is um, prohibiting any use of tobacco products, have a tobacco substitutes, paraphernalia, um, 
at any on any school grounds or at any school sponsored activity um, again this is employee and community um, and you had asked somebody had asked uh, what the consequences are um, certainly for employees uh, it would be disciplinary action um, and you know as far as community members I know I've personally reminded people but I don't know um, That's what else all we've done yeah. It's just reminded them that there's no smoking on the premises. Please don't smoke in the parking lot. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Julie, does that include e-cigarettes? Yes, it does. Yeah. There's no um, no vaping. Yeah, that really falls under the... It falls under paraphernalia. Yeah. Yep. Or tobacco substitutes. Yeah. CBD. Well, it's a huge problem. It's a huge CBD problem oil. for students. Mm. Mm -hmm. So that's all seven. Any further questions? Uh, on table <coughs> C9. We're, We're not on, on C9. We're on B. We're, on B. We're just doing B. I'm done with B. <laughs> We're not yet. <laughs> Oh, I'm trying to keep Chris moving here. <laughs> I appreciate it. So hearing none, uh, all those in favor of adopting uh, employees uh, B1 through B7, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, abstentions? Motion carries 7-0. Thank you, everybody. On to students, which there is 11. This is... Wow. So I am going to go through and stop on the few that had more comments. No one had any comments about education records, but Steve, that gets to confidentiality there. We've got the FERPA, um, it, the definition of record. Um, so there's the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act information there. Um, student alcohol and drugs had some comments. Um, one, we do actually need to name a partner uh, that does our, um, what's the word I'm looking for, screening, um, drug counseling. Um, we do have procedures for student alcohol and drug violations that the administrative team will be looking at and revising to make sure that they're comfortable with. They tend to be about um, discipline but I'd like to make sure that it's more than discipline but also about instruction and uh, supports um, as well as discipline when appropriate um, the other questions were around curriculum and community involvement um, we don't have a particular program for community involvement we have a tobacco uh, grant um, that has a lengthy portion about community involvement in all substance abuse um, and then we have programs we had for example some youth risk behavior survey evenings where community members uh, families and out community partners came in and discussed students um, results in that survey and talked about substance abuse among other risk behaviors um, we are working with uh, the guidance department on curriculum there have been curriculum materials for tobacco cessation and then we're also going to be talking about alcohol and drugs so that we have more of a k-12 alignment in what um, guidance and other school counselors are using to it doesn't mean it's the same in every school but we're having that conversation as a, as a district to make sure that there's mm -hmm. alignment um, I think that answered the question there and I know Just you had talked about comment. confidentiality. I don't know if I caught this if I added this in my if that's spelled out. Oh for heaven's sakes well we will fix that. What page is it on? Uh, page two of C two. <coughs> Under what community involvement it says it is yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh no sorry the cooperative one. agreements. Council oh, up here on circle it thank you yep so we'll fix that transportation there weren't any comments about transportation limited english proficient there were no questions about that firearms as we discussed before um, there is another policy that 
to know. I would recommend that you adopt this tonight, but I think that there is a stronger uh, version of this policy that we could add to that I'd like to bring before the board uh, in the future. Um, it has everything here, but it also has some statements, as I described, about encouraging students, which I think is nice and sort of spoke to what some of the comments were under the firearms policy. One of the things that came up uh, was whether it's a, where it says school board and district board. I didn't go through and wordsmith that, but there's no difference between school board or district board. Um, so it, it's up to you whether you want me to change those or not. Because you are a school board, just for more than one school. But that, I think, first appeared under that <coughs> policy. Okay, <laughs> home study students. Um, there was a question about whether we have a large population of homeschooling. We do have some. Um, and it's, I, it's, a, it's a decent percentage of kids that are homeschooled. I don't have that number, but we can bring that to you in the future. Um, but home study students are allowed to uh, access certain courses and programs. And there was a question when we got to harassment about whether it applied to home study students. And any policy of ours would only apply to home study students if they were participating in a school sanctioned activity or, say, taking a, a social studies class at high school um, or music or something like that. Um, then they would be protected for the time that they're here. Student attendance had a couple of comments. One is around um, you know, the days and so forth. We don't have that in policy, but we do have a truancy um, protocol that, as I said, the whole county engages in. And it really references if you are absent from, uh, I believe it's five days, you get a phone call. If you're uh, 10 days, you get a letter and a meeting. Beyond that, um, there are a, a number of things that can happen. They, they mean a meeting at the school, uh, possibly a referral to the truancy panel. Uh, there is a truancy specialist that currently has not been hired, but that the county has through NCSS that can work preventively with families to get children back in school. Um, and in the most severe cases, uh, either a referral um, through Department of Children and Families or an affidavit to the court system can happen. But those are, those are um, things that only happen if all of the other things have been put in place. And as far as a truancy officer, that is a good question for us. Um, it references a truancy officer. I think MVU, do we have our SRO as the truancy officer? I think we do. Also contract with NCSS for truancy, don't we? Well, as a support, but not in terms of. It's one of the sort of statutory obligations that really doesn't actually hold a lot of meaning. I mean, sometimes it's in a principle because they're the ones that are responsible for maintaining attendance. I mean, in, in essence, a building principal is the one that is the truancy officer because they're the ones that are making the phone calls and sending the letters and ensuring that it is followed up on. I think we should approve this one, but it may be an issue we want to have a whole attendance issue we may want to have on future agendas. Well, I think it'd be great to um, bring uh, the truancy policy and, and have some information. I know you've asked about truancy. I think it would be a good conversation to bring before the board. Um, pupil privacy rights. I'm trying to think if there was another question there. I apologize. Oh, there was. There's a question about the language that says students over the age of 16 um, need to attend if enrolled. And the question was, to, really, um, as a parent, can't you um, have your child drop out at that age? And yes, you can. Um, but that language references the statute that says, you know, if a parent in charge of a student 16 or older enrolls them in school, then they shall attend. So it really is a positive way of saying only a parent can withdraw a child 
uh, over the age of 16. And then at 18, they can drop out on their own, which we do not like. Um, but And we certainly work with parents not to allow their students to drop out, but they can uh, if they're over 16. But we do expect a student who is enrolled and whose parent has not supported their dropping out to be here. And uh, it's not... You know, they can just show up when they feel like it. They're still considered a truant student, even over the age of 16. That's what that language is about. C8, pupil privacy rights. There were some typos there and some oddly structured language. Thank you to whoever made those comments, and I made those changes. Um, but there were no other comments. But again, Steve, we've got a lot of confidentiality language and the pupil privacy right there. <coughs> now, wellness. So when we came to you last time, we were fresh from an uh, a review, administrative review of our wellness policy, and we were told it didn't cut the mustard. So we were concerned about which way to go with this language. And I know that Devin and, and Joyce worked really hard on doing a new wellness policy just last June. Well, I contacted them and they looked at the wrong policy. They looked at our previous policy. <laughs> so language is fine. Um, and I did make a few changes and I'm gonna pull them up. And give me a minute so I can do this properly. Nope, that would be wrong. Let me go into my drive. While she's doing that, how about a motion for uh, what we're working on right now? We haven't actually got to the motion part. Uh, we just went right to discussion. Should we leave out the wellness one for the moment? I'm just trying to get the motion, uh, not to vote, just to get to discussion. Yeah, I'll make the motion. I'll second it. Okay, discussion. So, I went line by line through the new po the policy that was adopted last June that Devin and Joyce worked so hard on, the model policy that you looked at before, and um, there are a few changes that are in a language that you had in your June policy that given the feedback I was uh, received today, are fine to sort of shift the model policy. So the answer to um, the question of whether we needed to pick the smart snacks language or the other one, mm -hmm. the other one is fine, the first one is fine. Um, and so I can be specific, I'm gonna pull it up. The policy of the district, that one, when feasible? Mm -hmm. Yes. So what I did is I made a copy of the one that is posted, okay, so that I wouldn't be changing the one that's online. And I went through and made a few changes. Um, one of the, the only thing that was wrong with the policy that we adopted already was that it said state agency of education, and it's supposed to say state board of education. So this model policy that we're working from says that, so that's fine. Um, all of these bullets, goals for nutrition, promotion of education, are all the same as you have in the policy currently. Only difference here is food shall not be used in district schools as a reward or punishment. You did not have that in your policy, but it is the law. Um, though what you did have was um, when food is provided for classroom celebrations, healthy options shall be available. Um, what I did is I took that sentence and I put it below where we were talking about celebrations. Mm -hmm. um, so it's up to you whether you want to leave the sentence about rewards and punishments. Um, the policy you have now does not list that. It is under the law. I don't think anybody punishes children by withholding food. Um, and I think we have all moved away from the difference, a celebration is not a reward. I said that at least five times today. Uh, 
but you know we have moved you know we, we want to be purposeful you know not we're going to have a pizza party if you do well on your SBAC testing but that there are other ways to celebrate besides having food but we also do use food in our celebrations and I think that policy is that's just fine um, so I would often leave be in there even though it's in law because I think it brings it more public to yep not many people sit down and read the law on some no, I think it's fine to have there. Mm -hmm. um, and I would also make the statement that if a student with a significant disability has a reward program that they need in order to access their public education and it involves food, that IEP would overrule this policy. So, you know, that would be extreme mm -hmm. example. Um, so, where I did make a change was, sorry, I'm looking at too many things, folks. I, I put right in here for you the choice of, it is the policy of the district that when feasible, food provided but not sold should be limited to those foods that improve the diet, health of students, help mitigate childhood obesity and model healthy choices. Um, we also have the language here above it that the school shall inform parents, guardians, and other volunteers to consider nutritional quality when selecting any foods for donations, class parties, snacks, lunches, etc. Um, so that language was there. Don't think that there were any other changes. I just want to be sure. Because everything else you had in your policy was the same. What concerned us last time around was when we reviewed your older policy didn't have any of the smart food references in the policy at all. Smart and that smart, smart snack. Smart snack, my apologies. Um, and, and that is in this policy and it is in your current policy around purchased foods. So, discussion. So same one I talk about every time. The uh, nutrition guidelines uh, section, I see you did put it in the policy, the language from the previous policy. Yes. Um, it, and then also included <coughs> one of those two options. Option um, one. Option one. Yes, I, that's what I did. I think some of the discussion last time, was from, from my perspective, was to include the language from the, the previous policy and not include either one or two from the options. <laughs> Does including one, what's what's there, yep. um, override anything we put in that section prior? Are we still are we st in the previous in the version previous that they that <clears throat> Joyce and Devin had worked on? You know, I, I don't. Or the, does this give us the, the kind of latitude? Because to, it says when feasible. It says when feasible and should. And we should. We, we talked to the state a lot today, and it, the, the smart snacks are being held to only the um, foods that are sold, not the ones that are distributed. That's a different interpretation than we've gotten in the past, but we both heard that today. So, I think when it says when feasible, it's, it, that's basically you can do whatever you want. It's true. So it's up to you what you want. I mean, so we were concerned because it is a million dollar federal food mm -hmm. program and we don't want to be, have findings of correction or they, right. you know, on anything. No, I get uh, it. So I was concerned about the snack, the smart snack language and making sure that whatever we put in this policy represented the feedback that they gave us. Mm -hmm. And they reviewed the current policy for me today and said it would, you know, so, whether you include uh, number one there or stick to the language in the old policy that I embedded in D, mm -hmm. you're fine. Okay. Yeah. So it's up to this board whether they want to cut out that it's the policy of the district that one feasible and just leave the rest of paragraph D. I think you're fine if you do that. Fine either way. Yep. All right. Uh, yeah, it's kind of that, that balancing act because I understand we have some, some obligations there. And, uh, at the same time, I, I don't want to. Put our teachers and parents and administrators in a position where they're having compliance and not meaning to be just sort of little things. So, um, thoughts from others on that last one? Okay. 
class, we should stand. I won't be the only one uh, <laughs> weighing in here. <clears throat> I don't really find either way. Um, I don't feel like we're. I don't feel like we would be putting people at risk of being in violation. It, I mean, words matter, and mm -hmm. it says feasible and should. Um, legally feasible and should, that does matter. Mm -hmm. um, but if others feel like, feel um, otherwise, then you know, I'm, I'm not gonna fight to keep it in either. I, I feel the same way. I, I feel it's, it's a direction, not a hard line. So, you know, it's the direction we should be trying to go, but it's not so rigid that, but if you, if you really want it out, so basically, it's your decision. <laughs> yeah, it's all on you, bud. I think it still allows you the flexibility, but it would show good faith to the state that we are taking their direction. So we are taking it into consideration that when possible and feasible, you will be limiting that, but you also have the flexibility to do what you want. That's how I read that. Mm -hmm. I do too. The administrators have any thoughts? I rarely see any reviews, actually. Yeah. I think much less now. Ten years ago, I think it was maybe different. So. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, since my kids have been in school, um, every function or celebration or reception or whatever it is where there's refreshments, there's always smart choices. Healthy choices, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's junk, because that's what everybody likes. But, <laughs> but there's also fruit, and, you know, whatever. No, I agree. Water. When I was in kindergarten, we had uh, it, ridiculous amounts of sugar in front of those yeah. five-year-olds. Every, you know, when I was teaching. Every every holiday, it was a wash. You just. It, you just sent those children home on the bus, just wired for sound. And it was not good. And it did not set, you know, so the schools have completely shifted yeah. that practice. And I think it's really important that I, I do think we've come a long way. And I think about maybe, you know, people bring veggie platters and mm -hmm. fruit. And, and yeah, there might be a, a treat. But I think it's really important that if there's a treat, even, that kids learn how to make those choices, yes. you know, in real life. People sometimes have treats, <laughs> and you have to learn not. You, know, you don't eat a dozen of that cupcake, or mm -hmm. and I just think that's important that if you take everything away, I think that that's. Um, you know, I think kids have to learn how to everything in moderation and making good choices. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why I like that part right there. This is model healthy choices because that's part of modeling healthy choices. If you just give kids carrots all the time, yeah. they're not going to learn. Gorge themselves. They're not going to exactly. learn about no, it's okay to have a cream yeah. yeah. gorge, right? Yeah. You know, it's you're not going to learn the moderation part of it. That's the reason I like it in there is that I think it takes some of the onus off the administration. You know, I think back to some schools where we have things like that, and. Uh, if this has been a policy that the board has reviewed, and somebody comes in and says to one of the principals, well, I don't know why I can't bring in cupcakes with double chocolate frosting on it, and say, well, you know, we try to stay away from that, and, and this is why. Maybe you say, this time I'm going to let you do it, but if you've got four kids in school, don't, don't bring them in for everybody. So sometimes I think the boards need to step up and be, if in quotes, bad guy. I don't think that's a bad guy thing, but it kind of says, this is this has come down from the board as an overall policy, and I'm doing my job to let you know that we're not denying it, but this is where, where the, the direction that we prefer to go. So that's why I'd like it in there. Are you ready for me to move on? Do you feel good to move on to harassment, hazing, and bullying? Sure. This is also one that is uh, always has lots of comments. Um, this is one that is right out of statute. All of our administrators are um, the, the definitions, the language, the procedures that we have, the, the student conduct forms that have lines on them about how to respond to 
each allegation and, and pre-investigation to determine whether you need to do a formal investigation is all tied to this language. Um, and we do have um, the boilerplate procedures, which we will not change one word of, um, because if you follow those procedures to the letter, you're, as an administrator, you are in a much better place of protecting <coughs> students and families and the school district. Um, I would encourage us not to tinker with that. I have been involved with the writing and pulling harassment laws. Yeah. I think if you start peer information, you get yourself in serious, have the potential to get yourself in serious trouble. Absolutely. Um, and I don't think there were any comments that had um, typos in that one. The, there oh, was please. One. I, I might not have the latest, but I had sent two names because we have to have two and I didn't. In the I in the latest one. I don't know that I have the latest one. I just want to make sure. Let me make sure that I look it up. Um, and I can always add a designee. These are not. This is not an exhaustive list of designees. There would be multiple more. There would be more. Which I have two. Have to have at least two. And I believe Joyce. I have you, and I have Christine. Okay. Um, but that's it's what's posted right now. The last one under C is student freedom of expression in school sponsored media. And this also is one, this is a new policy. It was um, language of statute that was passed, uh, I believe, last year in um, by the legislature. It is in statute. <coughs> there, the, there was a typo in here where it said complies instead of compiles when describing what a journalist oh. is. See, now it makes sense to me, doesn't it? <laughs> I didn't, it didn't make Comply sense to me either. information. I know. Uh, this so, one was passed not this biennium, but the previous biennium. Yes. And that is uh, all pretty much right out of the statute of what needs to happen. Um, that's it for C. There's a lot of them. No. Um, it's, it's a grammatical thing. Not. Was there another one? Page three under complaint. I did get uh, rid of wherever it said supervisory union. An oral with written report of information. C10, mm, sorry. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, information? Uh, right. written report information. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Sorry. Thank no. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> All right, so that is student mandated policies. Any further questions, discussion? All those in favor of adopting the student policies, C1 through 11, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries 7 0. On to instructions, there's six policies. I'll uh, entertain a motion for that one. Make a motion to approve policies in section D, D and through 6. I'll second that. Discussion. <laughs> so, let me go through. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> so, there were no comments about the proficiency. As, as you know, I cut that down to as little as humanly legally possible on that. Um, there was a question about, you know, could we get some more information about where we are with proficiencies? I think that's a good idea. It would be good to have some administration <coughs> or teachers come and do some presentation about that. Um, the responsible computer network and internet use. Um, there was a question about could we... Like get rid of parts of it. I, I didn't. I didn't make changes to the policy. I know some of it seems a little repetitive, um, but most of this is coming out of um, federal laws, particularly. 
Um, and I will say that our current policy, it was one that we were able to use, you know, when you've got a student who may, you know, who's misusing the internet, I mean, that can be a, a way of um, disciplining and making sure students get supports that they need, for example. So this is actually a pretty important policy. Um, next, Title I comparability, that was a straightforward one. There weren't any comments on that. Nothing on animal dissection. That's another one that the legislature made mandated a few years ago. <laughs> and class size, there was nothing. So those, there were no real comments on any of the D policies. Any other discussion and questions? Hearing none, all those in favor of adopting instruction policies D1 through 6, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carry 7 0. Uh, school community relations, one policy. Title I parental involvement complex. <coughs> I will make that motion. School community relations. Policy. Second. Discussion. Um, there was one comment which was do we need the compacts, the sample compacts at the end? We do not, so I took them out. <laughs> which makes the policy much easier to read. It is important that the schools have compacts and they get put on websites and things like that. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of uh, approving the school community relations uh, policy, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries 7 0. Uh, non instructional operations, uh, travel reimbursement. I think it's a very loyal plate with IRS regulations. Second. Was there a motion? Eric made the motion. I'll second. Thank you. <laughs> Discussion. There were no comments on this at all. Don's right. It's boilerplate. We our practice is to use IRS actual mileage, and that's what is reflected. All those in favor of adopting the non-structure operations or the travel reimbursement policy, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Abstentions. Motion carries seven zero. So, ladies and gentlemen, you have policies to start the school district. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. I know that's that was a lifetime long. experience. Yes. Thank you for putting all of the comments together. Well, it's important, and thank you for doing it. It's very helpful. Thank you, ladies. No principal or administrative announcements? Well, I do <laughs> want to make <laughs> I think they've announced what they, they want to. I will say, um, in terms of uh, a superintendent report, I just want to thank the communities uh, yes. formally for uh, approving our budget. Um, and uh, it means a lot that uh, people are supporting our school, even in a difficult time, our schools. Uh, and um, it was very, it meant a lot to everybody. And to the teachers, and to the paras, and to the principals, it meant a lot. So thank you. Uh, future meeting dates. When are we meeting next? Well, I wanted to ask you what your pleasure is for the month of July. Typically, you may not meet in the month of July, though last July, I felt like every board met twice. Um, and then we went on road trips, and there, were, there, there was a lot going on last July. But um, I would expect that you'd want to meet at least one time. Mm -hmm. um, I know that you talked about having a board retreat, which I think would be great as a new board, but I don't have time to, I, I don't know. Um, I don't think we're ready for it. Right I, I think in a little while um, that you could, it would, I think, help you 
sort of determine how you work together, maybe talk about vision a little bit. I think that would be a nice thing to do. Um, I want to reach out to some people who are good at that to help us with it. Um, and I, you know, maybe that's something you could do in September. For the holidays, I don't know. But I think we'll, we'll bring it up uh, in terms of timing. But I wanted you to know that. Um, what are the two dates of the office staff before? The second or the 16th? Pro you know, I don't know what people's holiday plans are, so you may no, want to not That's meet on the 2nd of July. The week of <laughs> July 4th, or on vacation right. with their families. Exactly. Mentioned it. 16th, there's a chance to see how things are rolling out. Yes. Uh, or corrections if we need it, so. And I don't want to have that meeting here at MVU because we may not have power. So, um, what? The, for the construction project, there oh. are a few weeks in, in oh. August, uh, July, where MVU will not have power. Um, there will be generators and, you know, there's a, a lot going on. But um, I don't know whether we'll have it at central office or another school, but um, we'll let you know. So the construction day. project impact your library? But we're not starting this summer anyway. No. We we just barely got approved. Uh, we're not even technically approved till July one anyway. So let's go to Highgate. Okay, we can do that. Let's start going out to schools. Let's go to Highgate. All right, and I wanted to make sure that you saw that there would be a uh, the sixteenth go to Highgate. Are you saying yes? yes. All right. So not on July second. Are we? I think July second would be. I don't think it better be here. No so, meeting. Uh, so we're removing <laughs> the July 2nd meeting? Yes. Well, I don't want to meet. Not have it. And if we have bills to approve, <laughs> I will just reach out to the I will clients. be available that week. The 16th? Right. You won't be? Oh, I'm sorry. I think the second is just going to be tough. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I, I'd rather a, not do the second. I mean, the sixth. All right. I'm there on the 16th. We're leaving the next day. So we'll start in Highgate. I think that's a good suggestion. I'll let you know if there's some conflict with the school, obviously, if the whole place is shut down for carpet cleaning or something like that. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll go with that as a plan. Um, and then we have uh, meetings, a schedule of meetings set up. Not that they can't be adjusted. We haven't looked at holidays or any of that yet. I just threw the first and the third Tuesday of the month in this grid. Um, and we'll make sure we'll, we'll revisit it as needed. But I think it's good to have a map of where we'll be. And then in August, we're just going to jump into the schedule. And... I think so. Okay. And I want to start touring schools. Mm -hmm. Hopefully nice. Channel 15 will come on the tours, too, so that we can show the public what our buildings look like. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, so our next MVSD school board meeting is July 16th at 6.30 at the Highgate Elementary School Library. Uh, and then there's a board member celebration uh, June 19th at 6.30 at the Abbey for all the local boards that are um, phasing out. We hope to see you there. And those who are phasing in. And yeah, those that exactly. are phasing in, please come. Absolutely. It's been a tremendously long and busy year for all of the local boards, and we appreciate it. So, seeing no reason for executive session tonight, I'll enter. Jay? Um, I know everybody's sick of hearing about Act 46, but um, I just want to let you guys know about the latest that's occurring in courts. Um, because of a lot of very egregious issues that have taken place this elsewhere in the state with regards to meetings being held, some of them being advertised as informational meetings, having them turned into voting meetings. Uh, in one particular instance, a meeting was scheduled to vote, <clears throat> and because the people didn't get to the building on time, the actual doors were locked, preventing people from actually participating to vote, certain merger questions, and so forth. So, in response to those egregious uh, uh, <clears throat> things that have been going on elsewhere in the state, uh, the attorneys filed uh, new motions for stays that happened this past Monday. And uh, as a result, Judge Mellon, as a matter of fact, today ruled, made a ruling, and uh, he denied all of the accounts that are outstanding that 
deal with the three things that we've been waiting for him to decide. So, you know, you would think that would <clears throat> be the end of it, but it's just the beginning because all the new motions have been filed already at Spring, uh, Superior Court, and uh, those will continue again tomorrow morning, uh, which is where the court that the attorneys want to be in the first place because there were comments made during the proceedings at Melville's court, one of which was uh, he had expressed his opinion that he didn't think it, he thought it was a waste of time for this to be heard in his court because it's going to be appealed anyway. So at any rate, um, <clears throat> things have moved fast in the last couple of days. So we're finally out of Mel's court and we're in the Supreme Court. Uh, those court proceedings will take place in Montpelier. And um, I think our, from talking with our attorneys uh, representing us in this class action suit, uh, they're very happy to be out of Mel's court back in the Supreme Court now. They were hoping that it would uh, that occurred a long time ago, but there was one thought that the judge was uh, deliberately stalling until the 1st of July so that everybody could get further into the merging process and make it more difficult should a decision be made that would be counter to the enforced mergers. So that phase of it is done. We're out of Mellon's court. The only thing I do want to I, I say this with with all due respect, it makes it the last court session that I was at. Um, I was surprised to see the law firm that we were used that we were using was listed as uh, representing the defendants. This would be the case, the state in this case. So the law firm that this district currently used, one of their attorneys were testifying. Um, they were representing, I believe, it was Mount Mansfield. Yeah. And but when they testified in court, uh, they made comments that that clearly showed their support for, for murders. And so I thought it was that made me feel uncomfortable. It was kind of a conflict in my opinion. So I just wanted to mention that to you folks. Um, and you can do with that with what you please. But I just think it was noteworthy to say that that uh, one of the attorneys that we hired here was uh, testifying and based on his comments he clearly supported mergers. But anyway, that's all water over the dam now. We're not in that court anymore. So now we're in the Superior Court. Instead of one judge, it'll be five judges. Thank you for the update. Uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. So second. Uh, may, uh, Jen, it's her first with the second. There you go. Uh, all those yes. in favor of adjourning at 920, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned.